Good evening to you all. Welcome you guys for a new session, new uh, a free session for you all uh, for your uh, Y by exam. Okay, right. So some of you may be knowing about myself. Uh, I'm Dr. Vasanta Desira, one of the VOG. So has been a European teacher for a long time. Right. So hope you all uh, successfully completed your theory part. I hope so, right? So it was, I mean, overall it was a balanced paper, not so difficult, not so easy either. However, I would say it's a balanced paper you had. So it's a good paper, right? Okay, right. So from today onwards, we are going to start this, uh, the Viva course, right? And basically, first of all, you all need to understand what is the difference between this theory and Viva. Same subject, if you take the option and the same subject, but you have two different exams, that's theory and viva. So what is the basic difference between this theory and viva? The basic difference is that when you come to the theory, can you all see me? Now, can you all see me? Yes, good. Yeah, so one of the differences is that one, in theory, you are supposed to know in and out and each and every single point in your syllabus. Basically, A to Z, everything can be questioned. Anything can be questioned in your theory paper. Okay, you need to know about the small fingerprints, right? Small things as well as the basic uh, other stuff also you, you need to know. But when it comes to the Y bar, exam content wise, it's very easy. In the sense, you will get questions, you will get patients, right? And your discussion is mainly a practical based discussion. So, for example, they won't ask from you all what is the cellular mechanisms where oxygen enters into your cells and how does the carbon dioxide exit, what, are the, what is the way the, the protein channels and all these things. They will not ask those rubbish because the people who will be coming to your exam will be clinicians, not theoreticians, okay? So they will assess you all. To see whether you are a fit, because the theory part already assessed. So when you come to Viva, they will assess whether you are a confident person, whether you are a confident person to become a house officer. That is what is they are going to assess from you. So what do I mean by a confident person? Confident person means if you take my subjects, ops and tiny, okay? So you need to have your basic theory knowledge. You need to have your skills to identify the patient problems. And you should have a basic idea and the skill to present these findings, the patient's problems to the examiner and thereby involved with the patient management. So you should be confident on that. You should be confident with your theory knowledge as well as you should be confident with your skills to find out the patient's problems. Okay, and thereby the management. So because of that thing, the, 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 the content wise, if you take the syllabus, the content wise, it's a small proportion when you compare the theory. Theory, you have to know everything, but when you come to the Viva, you are supposed to know only about, you know, 10, 11 topics, basic topics. Okay, that is one. And theory exam, Dargo, nobody will assess you. I mean, while you are writing, while you are putting your true or false, while you are doing your SPAs, no one will come behind and assess you then and there. Okay, so you can do anything in the exam and come home happily, like what you all done, what you all already have done. Okay, so nobody will assess you then and there. But when it comes to Viva exam, that is a bit stressful because you have to perform in front of an examiner. That is the most difficult part most of the students face. Okay, because you have to do everything in front of an examiner. 
So somebody will be directly observing you guys and somebody will be directly questioning from you all regarding the patient management. Okay, so you have to perform in front of an examiner. So that is big stressful because always there are personal variations. There are so-called good examiners, like they are, they are, they are very understandable about the, the students. They are, they are okay with the students. They, they know that you are level and they are not going to put you all down. But on the other hand, you may get, a question, uh, you may get an examiner, right? He's a bit stuck. He or she may be a bit stuck. Okay, so they need everything perfect from you. Right? Now, once I become a consultant, I still can remember I had a student period, I had a house of the period, registrar period, senior registrar period, and then only I became a consultant. But on the other hand, there are some guys, once they become, once they go to a higher level, they can't remember that they had a student period. These things are happening. So they might expect the 100% perfect from you. Okay, so that's all depend on your luck, whether you are going to get a so-called good examiner or so-called a tough examiner. But sometimes, Darwone, good examiners, so-called good examiners, they are nice with you all, they are talking nice, they are smiling with you all, and all these people, sometimes they might not give marks. But on the other hand, the tough people, so-called difficult examiners, right, even though they are difficult at the time of examination, but they might pass you all. So these all depend on your luck. So this part is not there when it comes to theory exam. If you have marked it, you will get the 100 marks. But when it comes to why, why it's person dependent. It's depend on your luck, it's depend on your patient, it's depend on your examiner. Okay, so these differences are there. But overall, Darwani, if you have passed your theory, there's a higher chance you will be able to succeed with your viva. So today I'm going to do a free session. Initially, I thought of being uh, the obstetric emergencies, the whole emergencies, but later on, I got the request from the students asking me to do some history taking part because that is completely new for you guys. Hello, any problem? Okay, so initial part I will be covering obstetric history taking. How are you going to take a history from a patient obstetrically, obstetric history? And the latter part, I will be discussing the most important obstetric emergencies. Hello, can you all hear me, Darwani? Any problem? No. Right? So history taking and obstetric emergencies also, I'm going to cover both. Right. So we will be first moving into this uh, history taking part, and I have to tell you all, right? So as uh, like the in the previous years also, I'll be allowing the students who are coming to me uh, to practice in front of me with the patients, right? So that will be a good opportunity for you all, as well as we'll be doing these uh, the speculum examinations. Uh, obstetric examinations, line examination, and everything with patients, right? So don't worry about those things because these speculum examinations are nothing. It's very simple thing, very simple procedure, but most of the students are scared of speculum. Speculum, they are so scared of that. I don't know the reason, but this is a very simple thing. You will understand after we have discussed these things, right? You will understand how easy this is, okay? Right. So don't worry. So I will be doing, when I'm going to discuss about this, uh, the viva topics, I'll be discussing the basic theory part, which is necessary for that topic. Today, you will understand, right? We, I will discuss the necessary theory, but not all theory, but necessary theory, but revise. And then we will discuss how to take a history from a patient. And then how to do the summarization. It's very important. Same like you take a history, you should be able to summarize your history. So we'll be doing those things, right? As well as Darwini, examinations, what are the important things and how will you do the examination and the discussion. I'll give you all, all the necessary points for your examination and the discussion. When we go on in a single day, I can't do everything, right? But when we go on in this, uh, our, uh, uh, the, the course, right? During our course, you will gain all this knowledge. So my target is to, Make you all confident for your viva exam. So at the end of the, uh, this course, I will make sure that 
you guys are confident yes we are going to arrange hospital visit as well right so don't worry hospital visits and the clinical uh, examinations is to take in an examination in front of a examiner in front of a patient right hospital visit speculum examination and all these necessary things everything necessary are being covered okay so don't keep any uh, doubt about it right so we will do everything and you will be confident at the end of this uh, session. Since this is the first day, I just talk a little, right? And afterwards, no talks, only the work. Right, Darwin. So we will first discuss about basic obstetric history taking. Okay, basic obstetric history taking in an uncomplicated patient. So today I'm going to discuss with you. This is the format that you have to apply for the remaining of patients as well. Whenever there is a deviation, either somebody has switched on his uh, microphone. Mic and please switch on your cameras and focus on your lovely, lovely faces. Right? All of you guys, please switch on your cameras and focus on your faces as a favor please do that right okay i will not be asking questions from you all directly right so you don't have to be worried right and you don't need to have your lipsticks and all these things not necessary okay free and chair so we will discuss about obstetric history taking right before i come to the obstetric history taking i will quickly revise about the antenatal care in Sri Lanka in few minutes. I will take only a few minutes. And I know that most of you guys are now having very good theory knowledge, but for the betterment, I will just revise about this uh, antenatal care in Sri Lanka. Okay, right. So when it comes to antenatal care, Darwani, when it comes to antenatal care, now antenatal care start with what is called preconceptional care. Preconceptional care. What do you all mean by preconceptional? Before pregnancy, what are the things that we have to do? Till somebody is has switch on uh, the microphone, please switch it off, please. Right? So preconceptional care. When a couple newly married, what are the things they have to do before they become pregnant? There are a lot of things they have to do, but I'm talking about the medical things that they have to do prior to pregnancy. That is called pre-pregnancy care. Then, then come the proper antenatal care. Antenatal means before delivery. Anti means uncle give wife maybe. Anti means before. Natal means delivery. Before delivery care. Antenatal care. Antenatal care that you can divide. As trimesters, three months periods. First trimester, up to 12 weeks. First trimester, second trimester, and third trimester. And in Sri Lanka, first trimester goes up to 12 weeks. Second trimester goes from 13 weeks up to 28 weeks in Sri Lankan setup. But in other developed countries like UK, North America, and all these countries, they are second trimester, maybe up to about 20 weeks, 24 weeks. But we don't have those facilities. Petrol, but 28 weeks or 20 weeks. So because of that, our second trimester goes on up to 28 weeks, still second trimester. Third trimester start after 28 weeks after the delivery. Okay, right? So as a doctor, as an obstetric student, you are supposed to know what are the things that you have to do in the preconceptional time? What are the things that you have to do in the first three months, second three months, third three months? Okay, so this is the antenatal care that we are going to discuss. All right, Darwani? Right. So I will not take much time on this because you all know about these things, right? Preconception. And suppose there's a newly married, lovely couple comes to your clinic. You are the obstetrician or you are the obstetric house officer. What are the things that you have to do when a patient comes to you? They will come and tell you, Doctor Corona is a newly married doctor. We are planning a pregnancy. What are the things that we have to do, doctor? So, what will you all do? What will you all do, Daru? You have to take a proper history 
and you have to do the relevant examination. And if necessary only, you have to do some investigations. Those are the three things that we do as doctors know, history, examination, and investigation if necessary. So you take a basic history, like whether you had any problems, medical problems before diabetes, hypertension, ischemic heart disease, or any epilepsy, any problem before, medical problems, okay? And if there's a medical problem, suppose patient is a diabetic patient, Daru, what will you do? Or if patient is an epileptic patient, what will you all do? Can you all manage epilepsy alone? No. Are you the expert for that? No. So what do you have to do? You have to talk to your uh, neurologist, right? Or if there's a cardiac problem, refer to a cardiologist. If there's endocrine problem, refer to an endocrinologist like that. You arrange the other people also for the management. What is that called? Multidisciplinary care. Multidisciplinary care. This is a very, very, very important term when it comes to the wider exams. I will arrange multidisciplinary care. That is, that will score many, many marks. It's so important to mention about this multidisciplinary care in the exam. At the end also, if you are coming out, if you're going away also, you just tell multidisciplinary care and go out. You may get some marks. It's like that. It's very important, this multidisciplinary care. Multidisciplinary care means that you involve the other people also for the management. Not all, each and every patient in multidisciplinary care, but people with medical disorders complicate in pregnancy. You need multidisciplinary care. Suppose you have taken a history, the female partner is absolutely fine, male partner also is, is a fit guy. What will you do next? There is no medical problem. Do you need multidisciplinary care, Darwani? Someone? Do you need multidisciplinary care in that case? No. You can manage this couple. Okay. So, what will you do routinely? Suppose there is no medical problems, what will you do? Shakura, what will you do, Daru? There are no medical problems detected. Patient still in the preconceptional time. So, what are the things that you will routinely do? You have to give them folic acid, preconceptional folic acid. Preconception of folic acid. What is the dose? 400 micrograms. We don't have 400 microgram tablets, so one milligram tablets we have available. So you can give everyone one milligram folic acid. Okay. If there is a patient with high risk, like obese patient, diabetic patients, epileptic patients, patient with the previous baby with uh, uh, neurological problems you have to give them five milligram folic acid, okay? So whatever it is, you have to give folic acid. And next thing in uh, preconceptional time that you have to do that, oh, make sure that patient is immune for rubella. Ask from the patient whether you had rubella vaccination. If yes, you can assume that she's immune. Suppose Hashan, she will tell, doctor, I can't remember whether I had, uh, uh, I got rubella vaccine when I was in school. So I can't remember whether I, whether I had uh, rubella vaccination or not. What you can do? Indica, what you can do, Daru? Patient not sure about rubella vaccination. Still not pregnant. You can check rubella specific, yes, antibodies. Rubella specific antibodies, you can check. Okay, if the antibodies are there, then you know she's immune. If antibodies are not there, you can ask the patient to go and get the rubella vaccine right now and wait at least one month to become pregnant after the vaccination. You get the vaccine today and wait at least one month before you embark with the pregnancy. Okay, Sujivan, you had a nice haircut, right? Good. <laughs> so, all right, Darwani. So, preconception is these are the things that you have to do. You have to arrange multidisciplinary care if there's any medical problem. Then, prescribe everyone one milligram folic acid or high risk patients five milligram folic acid and make sure that they are immune for rubella. So, these are the things that you have to do before pregnancy. Now, suppose you have given folic acid, patient was immunized against rubella. And then you tell them, okay, you are fit for a pregnancy. Stick a katahana pitipasi. 
right? Fit for pregnancy, something like that. Okay. So you tell the patient, look, you are a low risk category. You come to low risk category, so you can have a baby. Okay. Right. So once they become pregnant, now they are pregnant, they are coming in the first trimester. What are the things that you have to do in the first trimester, Darwin? I just share the screen with y'all. All right, okay. So first trimester, what are the things that they have, you have to do? Now they have to continue the folic acid throughout the first trimester, Daru, and they have to come and see a doctor. Okay, Saman, they have to come and, and they have to come and meet a doctor and get advices during the first trimester itself. That is called booking visit. What do you mean by booking visit? The first visit. Okay, first visit that they will encounter a, a doctor or a medical personnel during pregnancy. So in the booking visit, what are the things that you have to do, Darwani? What are the things that you have to do for a uh, booking visit? Again, whether they have come for a preconception of care or not, you have to get the history, examination, and do examinations, uh, investigations also. History as usual, you take a history from all the history past, medical, past, surgical, and all of blah, blah, blah. And you do examination, especially check the blood pressure and check whether any murmurs are there. Okay, do a proper examination. And then investigations wise, wise what are the investigations that you need to do? Investigations wise, Darwo, you have to do, do these investigations. What are the routine investigations that you will do in each and every patient? Okay, Mr. Darwo, Charita, what are the investigations? You have to do a full blood count. Okay. You have to do urine full report. What else? You have to do OGTT, glucose tolerance test or OGCD. Now, normally OGCD is out of fashion. People do OGTT. Every mother who is, a, who is not a non-diabetic patient, you have to do OGTT test right at the booking visit. Remember, everyone should undergo this. And you have to do a VDRL test. And if facilities are there, you better do HIV testing also. So these tests should be done each and every patient. Then the Ricardo to value. Then why we will tell how much I know. Then me may not keep a little how many times you guys have written these things, right? Okay. Just try to put them into your mind, right? Because you all know about these stuff. I'm um, just recap. Okay, revising things. Okay, that way. So, in addition to and one more thing, I forgot to mention very important blood group. Blood group to see whether she is positive or negative. So, full blood count, blood group, unit full report, glucose tolerance test, VDRL, plus or minus HIV test. Okay, promoting. Right. Then one of the other most important investigation that you will do during the booking visit is called dating scan. Okay, dating scan is very important. What is the best time to do dating scan? Best time is right. Eleven to fourteen weeks is the best time to do a dating scan. By doing a dating scan, you can correct the date. What is the measurement that you are going to take, Darwo? Crown rump length or the CRL from head to uh, buttocks, right? You measure the length. This is called crown rump length. Okay, Satya Seelan, right? So you do CRL measurement and see whether what about the dates, whether the dates are correct or not. Okay, right. Now, what are the other advantages of doing a uh, dating scan, Daru? What are the other information that you can gain? You can count how many fetuses, whether it's a single fetus or multiple fetuses, twin, triplets, and all. You can see the chorionicity. You can measure nuchal thickness. All these assessments can be done at the dating scan. So it's very important. So this is a 3D picture, right? Just for the interest, right? 3D scan, if you want, you can do a 3D scan. You can have a better picture, but even 2D scan also enough for a dating scan. Right? These are twin pregnancies. 
the pitch on your left hand side is dichorionic this is lambda sign pitch on the right hand side is a thin uh, thin septum this is monochorionic t sign this is t sign this is lambda sign so chorionicity is best determined fumi at the time of dating scan okay so dating scan is very important right so those are the things that we will do in the first trimester what are the things that we will do you continue folic acid and get a history examination and investigations investigations full blood count blood group of all these investigations and most importantly you have to arrange a dating scan okay to see the dates and the to get the other information now first trimester what are the problems patient can get commonly some of the patients and larger proportion of patients can get bleeding okay in the first uh, first trimester itself threaten miscarriages threaten miscarriages okay so you have to ask from the patient whether any history of bleeding and the other thing is you all know that oh, first trimester i have written those things in your note also right in first trimester is the most vulnerable time for the fetus why the major organs like brain heart adrenals limbs and all these structures are developing in the first trimester so if you get a congenital infection during the first trimester there's a chance of congenital abnormalities of the babies so ask from the patient whether you had any history of fever with rash fever with rash okay madhavi fever with rash ask from the patient any history of fever with rash maybe rubella maybe toxoplasmosis maybe any congenital infection so the problems are infections and bleeding commonly in first trimester this is the these are the things that we will do routine now suppose first trimester is over patient is moving on to the second trimester charitra in the second trimester dargo what are the things that you have to do now patient is already on folic acid patient is already on folic acid what are the other things that you will do in the uh, in the second trimester when the patient comes to the second trimester you can put them on iron and calcium tablets routinely each and every woman remember iron and calcium is not given together why why manuji we don't give iron and calcium together because if you give them together absorption is less especially the iron absorption will be less so if you give iron in the morning calcium in the evening or vice versa and the other thing is that when when in the second trimester you are supposed to give tetanus toxoid to the patient tetanus toxoid so you normally give the first dose after the first first time like around 14 weeks and after 4 to 6 weeks you give the second dose in priming so normally that go first pregnancy you give two doses of tetanus second pregnancy <coughs> one dose of tetanus sorry third pregnancy another one dose of tetanus fourth pregnancy you will give another one dose so how many doses altogether you have given five doses husband mother fit for a lockdown is together my in fifth time also she is coming with the pregnancy will you give more tetanus toxoid therapy no no more toxoid again only five doses five cumulative doses first pregnancy two one 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 no more toxoid okay so likewise in the second trimester you are supposed to give this toxoid vaccination also okay in addition to that because of the current situation you can give you all know that uh, the corona vaccine covid vaccine you can give now they recommend even at any trimester you can give corona vaccine okay so vaccination initially it was only uh, the, the the tetanus toxoid now corona vaccine also comes then iron and calcium started vaccination done next step is next important thing is anomaly scan anomaly scan 
Anomaly scan is to detect main anatomical abnormalities. Okay, MA. Right, right. Main anatomical deformities. Like from top to bottom, you can see the head, you can see the brain in anomalies, sometimes the facial, major defects, limb defects, cardiac defects, renal problems, bubble problems. All these things you can detect with the anomaly scan. What is the best time to do anomaly scan, Ganguly? What's the best time to do anomaly scan, Daru? 18 to 22 weeks. 18 to 22 weeks. Okay, Piyumi. So 18 to 22 weeks is the best time to do anomaly scan. Can you detect all anomalies with this anomaly scan? Can you detect all anomalies with this anomaly scan? No. Only the major grossly gross abnormalities only you can detect. Sometimes people may come and complain you after the delivery. Doctor Balana Magi Babagi, how to put a pet check up in on the moon pet check up in on it. Or like a decade at the scan again, something like that. Can you detect those things? Only the major anatomical defects only you can detect. Okay. And you should be able to differentiate abnormalities from normal variants. If you see this cardiac picture on your right hand side, on your right hand side, these are the ventricles, two big ventricles and two atria. Can you see there's a defect between atria? This is in an adult, it's ASD. But in a fetus, this can be foramen ovale. So you don't call this as ASD in a fetus. This is a normal. But in an adult, if you see this gap, if you see this shunt, this is ASD. This can be an ASD. But in a fetus, this is normal. So likewise, when you do the anomaly scan, you should know what is the normality, and then you can have, uh, interpret abnormalities. If you see this picture, this is a cross-section of the brain. You can see hardly any brain matter, only the water filled in the ventricles, dilated ventricles. Okay? So this is hydrocephalus. Hydrocephalus. So, likewise, Darwin, you can detect these abnormalities. You can see the Omphalo seal. And you can see, sorry, gastroschiasis. What is the difference between Omphalo seal and gastroschiasis? In gastroschiasis, the bubble loops are not covered with the membrane. In Omphalo cell bubble loops, which one has a better prognosis? This one, Omphalo cell or gastroschisis? Gastroschisis has a better prognosis. This is better to have. Okay. So can you see these limbs? These are short limbs and deformed limbs. Can somebody give me a, an example or a causative factor for this? Any infection causes these limb deformities? Very well. Very good. Who is this bright student? Right? Is varicella, congenital varicella infection can cause these limb deformities just for the interest. So likewise, you can identify the parliamentarians also with the anomaly scan. How? Absent brain. You can detect them. You can see these prominent eyeballs, Google, Google eyes, right? Prominent eyeballs, polyhydramnios, and this is characteristic of an encephaly. This is after the delivery, right? So all these deformities can be detected with the anomaly scan. Best time to do is between 18 to 22 weeks. Okay, Darwani, is that clear? Right. Now, we know what, what we have to do before pregnancy. We know what we have to do in the first trimester, second trimester. In the latter part of second trimester, Darwo, around 24 to 28 weeks, 24 to 28 weeks, you have to do another important thing. What is that? What is the important thing that you have to do after 24 to 28 weeks? Charita, what do you have to do? 
You have to re-screen them for diabetes. You have to re-screen them patients for diabetes around 24 to 28 weeks that morning. Right? That means, now, remember, we have to do OGTT test at the booking visit, right at the booking in visit. If you found that OGTT is high at booking visit, it's a chronic diabetic patient. You don't repeat OGTT again. However, at booking visit, OGTT was normal. Then you have to re-screen them around 24 to 28 weeks with another OGTT. Okay, so if your OGT values were high at the booking visit, you don't repeat it. But those who had normal reports at booking visit, you have to repeat them around 24 to 28 weeks. Is that clear, Darwani? Right? Yes. So after 28 weeks, Darwin, there is no routine care. Routine things we don't do, but you have to get down the patient to the clinic, you have to check the blood pressure, you have to check the, uh, the baby's growth. Only the, those things we are doing, blood pressure, growth, and those things, right? Right? If necessary, you can arrange another growth scan in the third trimester, but it is not a must. Basically, we are supposed to do two scans. One is dating scan. Other one is anomaly scan. Dating and anomaly scan. Afterwards, if necessary, if clinically indicated, you can do a growth scan in the third trimester, not routinely. So this is the routine antenatal care in Sri Lanka in a summarized manner. Okay. So now we'll be moving to our topic that is that is that one. Sorry, that is obstetric history table. Come to the topic now. Obstetric history table. Right, take 30 seconds off. You can send a message to a boyfriend, girlfriend, say hi to someone. You can tell them that they are boring, something like that. Right? Please switch on your cameras, Daruni, please. Right? And focus on your faces. Right? All right, take your time, relax yourself. Think something interesting about your dinner, about the kothrati or something like that. All right, shall we restart that one? Right, okay. Now we are going to discuss about obstetric history. Now, first of all, tell me, what is the purpose of taking an history? Sudarshani, what is the purpose of taking an history, Daru? Taking a history. What is the purpose? You need to gain some information about the patient. That's why. Okay. You need to gain some information about the patient. Why you want to gain information? Something else. For what purpose, Daru? By gaining those information, it is important for the patient management, isn't it? So ultimate purpose of a history taking is patient management. So after taking a history, most of the students, even the doctors, even the postgraduate students, everyone having a doubt in their mind, right? Whether my history is adequate or not, whether I have taken enough things, for the patient management, okay? That problem comes to anyone, right? Everyone having a problem after taking a history, whether my history is adequate or not, okay? So what are the things that there should be, there must be in your history at the end of the day? Okay, after taking a history, this is important not only for OBS and Diane Daru, for other subjects also. So, after taking a history, you are, you are you're wondering whether my history is adequate or not. 
with I will pass my exam. That is the main purpose. No, patient game management no bamboo bhaga ni kela. But you have to pass your exam, right? So will I pass my exam? So how you can sure about it, right? So after taking a history dalone, you have to come to a diagnosis. Diagnosis, or you need to have a differential diagnosis. If you have come to a diagnosis, that is great. At least, if you have several diagnoses, this can be a uh, small for gestational age, this can be constitutional uh, small baby, or this can be wrong dates or something like that. If you can come to a differential diagnosis, that is a great history. Okay, so there should be a diagnosis or differential diagnosis. But yes, if there is a diagnosis, you have to identify the uh, the, the the positive factors. If there are positive factors or predisposing factors for this, suppose in your medicine, Darwini, in your medicine, now you are supposed to do the short case, cardiovascular short case. If you have detected mitral stenosis, what is the positive factor? Probably rheumatic fever. Okay, so your diagnosis is mitral stenosis, probably because of rheumatic fever. That is the positive factor that you need to identify. Then what else? Thirdly, Dago, you have to identify the complications. Because of this thing, what are the complications? If you have mitral stenosis, patient can develop atrial fibrillation, heart failure, anything possible. Those are the complications. Then finally, you should know the other factors about the patient, other factors. Like what kind of a social, social economic stability the patient is having, special economic stability. If the patient is the breadwinner of the family, then if you keep him, him or her in the ward for a long time, then the whole family is going to affect. And what about the family background? Any family support? Whether the husband is a chronic alcoholic, that all comes under your social history. Social things like gossips, kind of gossips. Okay, Gayatri, right? So after taking a history, see whether yourself, you can assess your history by yourself. See whether you have come to a diagnosis or at least differential diagnosis. If there is no diagnosis or a differential diagnosis, that means your history is inadequate. If there are predisposing factors or positive factors, maybe there, may not be there, but that is not a must, but better to identify them if there are. Definitely, you have to identify what are the complications of this patient because of this problem, what are the complications? And finally, Daru, you should know each and everything about the patient, okay? What is the social background? What is the cultural background? And what is the, the economic stability of the patient? What is the monthly income? What is the, how, how about the accessibility to the hospital? Whether the patient is far away from the hospital, like Galen Bindunuava or Titta uh, Pajala or somewhere. Where's Titta Pajala? It's not that far, it's closer to Candy, right? So likewise, you should know all these factors, other factors regarding the patient management. So if you have all these details with y'all, I'll guarantee that you will pass your YBA exam. Your history presentation will be, history will be perfect. Okay. Okay, Anisha, right? So after taking a history, please make sure that you have a diagnosis or a differential diagnosis. You have identified the positive factors if there are. This is especially important for your medicine, surgery and all, rather than absent dining. And then see whether patient is having any complications because of this disease. And finally, Dado, you should know each and everything about the patient's social and cultural and economic background. Okay, so if you all have all these components in your history, your history is a perfect history. Right. Any problems so far? Any problems so far? Sachini, any problem? Mewanti, Tisari, Steve, Zainab, any problem so far? No, everything understood? 
Ayesha Pereira, everything understood? Okay. Right. Now, I'm going to discuss with you all regarding this obstetric history taking. Please keep these, those four facts in your mind that will be really important for your throughout, whether not only obstetric in medicine, surgery, and everywhere, when you go to take a history, you should know about those four facts about the patient. Right. Now, come to the obstetric history taking, obstetric history. So what are the steps that you have to follow to gain those information? We have to go in the methodical way. You can just go, at, go to a patient and purposely ask patient from patient here and there. Then you will miss most of the stuff. So because of that, there's a procedure, there's a protocol, there's a stepwise manner that you have to follow when you're going to get the history. Okay. First thing is the introduction. Okay, especially that when you come to the exam, the examiners, they are, they are coming from uh, uh, other hospitals. So they are most of the cases, they are unaware about the patient. Even though they are aware about the patient, you have to assume that they don't know about the patient. So basically, in two, three sentences, you have to give a brief, very concise, very comprehensive introduction about the patient should be concise introduction. You don't talk about hours and hours about introduction. And the other thing I have to tell you all that one is, when it comes to the exam, why the exam, your fight is always with the time. Because you have a limited time. Usually for a history taking and history taking, they will give about 15 to 20 minutes. But sometimes this time factor can vary, especially if you are the first, first candidate to go to the exam, then the examiners are also fresh, they have enough time, they will give you about 20 minutes for you all to take the history and prepare. And examination and presentation and discussion will be another 20 minutes, so 40 minutes together. That is the usual uh, the recommendation. However, if you are the, the late comers for the exam, right, then you won't get 20 minutes to get the history. They might give you only about 10, 15 minutes to get the history and prepare like that. Okay. So your, your battle is with the time factor. If they give you two, three hours, of course, anyone can get the history and you can present all the details. But this is a battle with the time. So when you're taking history, always Please mindful about the time factor, how long you will spend on history taking. At the end of these sessions, not today, not tomorrow, after about two, three weeks time, within about 10, 15 minutes time, you should be able to take an obstetric history. I will teach you all, I will train you all for that. Okay, so we have to avoid all unnecessary things. Right now, if you, I know that some of you guys will attend to another class or some other classes after this, it's okay, right? But when you're going to take a history, Darwo, don't ask about these unnecessary routing, routing things. I will tell you all later. Okay, so focus on the point and focus and preserve your time. Right, after the introduction, what are the things that you will ask in the introduction? First of all, when you now in your exam, since this is the first day, I have to tell all these things to you all, right? So in the exam, you will be given an no observation and they will ask you, okay, take a history and prepare. This is the, the command that they will give. Take a history and prepare. And while you are taking the history, some examiner will be observing you all. What they are observing, this is the stressful, this is a stressful situation because for clinical subjects, of course, you all are new. And on the other hand, that person is straightly witnessing, that person is straightly looking at you. Whatever the bull that you are playing there, he will directly observe. Okay, so that is stressful. But my advice is 
Now, you, when you are giving the, the patient, you just talk with the patient, just ignore the examiner. Don't think that somebody is looking at you. Just ignore him. Right? While you are taking the history. Because if you think that, okay, when you ask a question, okay, this person might think that it's a, it's a foolish question that I'm going to ask. Then you will lose your confidence. Okay? So what you have to do is just ignore the examiner. He will not interrupt you all while you're taking the history. He will not interrupt, but he will be observing. Time to time, he will be observing you all. So just ignore him or her. You concentrate on the patient. Okay, you concentrate on the patient. You go to the patient, and I know that everybody knows that you are under so much of stress. Then now with this pahat panel, tamba kasadya bandalane, apy parali tapu enjoy him then koti ganam vali hamba karano, tamba apy ammala thattu lagin ya penni ERPM class or baragana devan veno. Right? So all these problems you all have. So you are under so much of stress. Right? So you may be sweating like nothing. You may be shivering. All these things are there. But be cool. Go to the patient and talk to the patients nicely and smile. Always smile. Talk with a smiling face. You know what I mean, right? Patient can't you know, but you have to always do not show your stress to the patient. Show the patient that you are a confident person. Out the visa cops and guy experience at the end of the time, right? Like in Sutin Martin, right? So you have to always show that you are a confident person in this subject. So go to the patient, nicely have a smile and say, Depending on the patient's circumstances, you can see whether the patient is a higher class patient or a middle class patient or a lower class patient, whatever it is, right? Just say, if you are a single person, if the patient is a single person, patient, say, Subodhasana Kama, right? Or as you can say, good morning, Amma, that's okay. But better to use single words if you are a, if you have a single patient. If you are a Tamil patient, uh, Tanusha, Right. So whatever the day you have to greet the patient. Okay. That's what I want to tell. But don't use too much of English posh words. A good morning, come and then something like that. Don't use them, right? Just tell good morning, Amma. Because pregnant patients doesn't matter the age, you can say Amma. Because she's a pregnant woman, mother, pregnant mother. So say Amma. Good morning, Amma. Imaneta. Subodasana Kama. Something like that. Okay. Greet the patient and smile. But don't show that to the patient. Okay, Have a smile face and talk to the patient and say, greet the patient. And then introduce yourself and tell who you are briefly. What you have to tell, Mama. Medical student, for in Katawa Tepa, Eka Tatarada, Mama Medical Student Kenek, Mama Oyagin, Bister Tika, who want to come up Nath. Okay, that's all you have to tell. Uh, Tamil and Muslim students, if you all can't understand what I am saying, please tell me, okay? Because most of the patients that you are going to come across in the exam will be single speaking patients, unfortunately, right? So you need to have some kind of, you know, communication uh, in single as well. Sign up. Okay. If you can't understand anything, better, please let me know. I'll explain. I know Konjam Konjam Tamil also, right? Okay. So you go to the patient, just smile and tell Subodhasana Kamma like that. Then tell. Don't tell in the exam, I'm a doctor. Is that okay to ask patient? Mama doctor can make Mr. Tiaka what come because some examiners are so it's irritating them. Make a doctor can kill and doctor killer yourself. Like that, better to tell Mama medical student in Mr. Please use these tricks, right? Small things, but matters a lot. Right. You go to the patient, say good uh then you tell Mama medical student. You don't have to tell your name, right? Just tell Mama medical student in it. Then the patient will say, okay, or oh, patient might smile. Okay, that means she has given the consent for you. Okay. Now the examiner is looking at you, but don't look at the examiner. 
you are straight away looking at the patient. And always try to maintain eye contact with the patient. It's very important. Those things will be observing by the, the, by the examiner. If you talk with the patient, like while you are looking at the ceiling, or while you are counting the number of sands on the floor, like this way, then that shows that you are not a confident doctor. Okay, so smile with the patient and have eye contact with the patient and talk. Now we are going to talk about the introduction. What are the things that you need to know about the introduction? Name. Name is important. Age. Where she is coming from. What kind of a professional or the job? What kind of a professional? And which pregnancy is this? Which pregnancy? Which pregnancy is this? And also, if you think that you are going to forget about the blood group, you can even ask about the blood group also here. Blood group. So name, age, where she's coming from, what kind of a professional she is, what's the job, and which pregnancy is this, and what is the blood group. So singular, in singular, how will you ask all these questions? Okay, like Kanti Pereira, Netang Nishanti Ratnaik, Netang Logaraja. Uh, or something like that. Name. Okay. Digger Nam Aramundian Salagi, Mudian Salagi, Apachidagi, Nabalagi, Eum Kutabian, just in short, Krishan de Pereira, or somebody like that. Okay. Name. Age. Why is a key other? In Aurudu. Aurudu, why is a key other? Aurudu is a high, this Pahai, like that. Age. Kohe in Danda Abbey. You have to ask. Kohe in Danda. Suppose your exam center is Colombo, say Castle Street Hospital, Colombo, right? So you have to ask from the patient, Kohe Nandavi. Patient Kena, Kohe Hari, say, um, patient will say somewhere like, you know, um, somewhere, more to work, more to work. It's a good idea, roughly how far away from the hospital? About 15 kilometers away from the hospital. Or else, if you get your exam set as Anuradhapur or Betty Close somewhere, patient may tell a uh, town or a village which is not known to the examiner and to you. So you just ask, how far away from the hospital? That is very informative. Okay. Hospital again, a kochana do rather. Kilometer. Dahaya, pahalava, paha, deka, kuna, something like that. You have to ask. Namamokakta, vaisaki, the kohe inanda army. Kohe inanda ave hospital ke na kochra durada. Okay, right? Then job pe ka karena madhe. Most of the women in Sri Lanka they born, they some are uh, occupying, but some are not. Um, they are not doing jobs. So so you can say she's a housewife, right? Or she's a teacher, she's a clerk, something like that. Profession is important. Which pregnancy? Eka ko madhe pyaar ni singhali. Keep any part of the pregnant to me. It's very important. Keep any part of the pregnant to me. Patient will say, follow any part of the pregnant to me. Are you lazy? Near money. Maltila Madin. Easy story, you know. Primary first pregnancy. So you don't have to worry about the previous pregnancies and all. But patient might say, pass any part of pregnant to me, doctor. Pass any part of pregnant to me. It's about up your hand on it. Babala key the king. Babala hatha the king. That's good. Something like that, briefly, I'll come to the point later, right? Ask, which pregnancy is this? How many babies you have? Give any part of the pregnant to me. Part pregnant to me. Give any part of the pregnant to me. Babu kiya city. Okay, right. Then ask about blood group. Le varge mokakko. Le varge mokakko. Everybody take a deep breath. Take a deep breath. Take a deep breath. 
some are yawning, some are sleeping, some are thinking about their boyfriends, something like that. Okay. Just leave everything now. Relax yourself. Think about your future um, internship. Very interesting internship. So think about your future. Okay. Right. So these are the things that you have to ask from a patient. Naba mukhatte why is kiye the? Kohi dan the aave hospital ki dan kochre dure the. Job be kakkar na wade. Ita passe labor ke mukhatte. Okay, Daruni. Right. So when you are presenting these introduction in uh, these findings to the examiner, you have to always start with saying that my patient is. My patient is like in this way. My patient is Mrs. Kanti Pereira or Miss, Mrs. Prashanti Pereira. She is 25 years old, primary mother from Nitambu area that is about 20 kilometers away from the hospital. She is a housewife. She is a housewife and her blood group is O positive. Like that. In two, three sentences, maximally three sentences, you have to finish off your introduction. Because this is the first time you are going to open up your mouth and you are going to show your confidence to the examiner. If this is not a primary, how will you present? Suppose this is her third pregnancy having two children. So how will you present? My patient is Mrs. Kanti Pereira. She's 25 years old, mother of two children in her third pregnancy. See the way I'm presenting. Mother of two children in her third pregnancy. Okay, got it. Mother of two children, maybe mother of one child in her third pregnancy. Or mother of four children in her fifth pregnancy. Something like that. You know, my patient is always saying, my patient is very important. Don't say, this woman, would you like if somebody tell, me gaini aave, me hei dang, me palavini parthaya pregnant, la tini kela singhali inki noda kamsi the no. The woman is not a good term as far as your history presentation comes. So always use either lady or use my patient is. These are small, small things, but count a lot and a lot of marks in your exam. So my patient is Mrs. Always use Mrs. Years old, mother of two children in her third pregnancy. In her third pregnancy, mother of two children, right? She's a teacher. She's a teacher from um, Yakkala area that is about 20 kilometers away from the hospital and her blood group is O positive. Okay, that warning, right? Right. That is all about introduction. Everybody clear about introduction? At the end of this uh, exercise, I will take a history from one of you all and I'll teach you all practically how to get this history. Okay, Nipun? Right. All right. So then after the introduction, what is the next thing is what is called the presenting complaint. Presenting complaint. What is presenting complaint? Patient is admitted to the hospital due to some reason. Meaning, so colleague and my hospital in any they are coming due to some problem or a concern. Okay, so you have to ask what is the main reason why you came to the hospital? Okay, that is called that is called what presenting complaint. Now, when you are going to ask about this presenting complaint, how will you ask in Singhala Daru? Tamil and Muslim students, Daru, if you all have any problem, let me know again. Okay, right. So, how will you ask about this presenting complaint? A hospital Ave. Amma oya a hospital lekata Ave. Something like a hospital lekata Ave. 
So patient may be having multiple complaints. Doctor, magi kapule vi dena. Ire a olu ar kodda vi dena gatta. Me tanat vi dena, atanat vi dena. Mama ite pasi doctor disa naik la gatte gya. Doctor disa naik me ma be ita gya dunna gastritis kele ite pasi ekar harge ne. Mama ita doctor pere ra langa tadiya. Likewise, patients, some patients are very talkative. You know, if we, if you get especially a teacher, teachers are very difficult to handle, right? Right? If you get lawyers, teachers, and all, they will keep on talking. Kata tien ne meka ne kata karan ne mani so when you come to the exam also they will keep on talking. But you don't have time to listen to all these stories. But you can't half a interview. Ne 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 okay ne ma bade ne hari ne moya ne bolke la. Ne ma kya ne ben. Right, so you have to be very tactful, and you have to ask from the patient. But the care number one, at the hospital, like that, me, other enter that one, but the head to doctor, Baba, that girl, ne. Ah, that is the main concern. Doctor, what body check you must have. That is the main concern. Oh, doctor, bleed to na year report da. Husband, goda, kali, ne pasi, ami ke dalaga. Doctor, year report da bleed na. Then you know the story, right? Something like that. Main things. Forget about this back pain, head, uh, small head, non-specific headache, uh, the limb pains, and all these things. Aches and pains. All girls and women are having these aches and pains. No, over again, we concentrate on your boys. You won't have time to do anything else. So just leave them for a time being and ask what is the main concern. Hey, at the hospital, in the case, do me bleed, do not. That is a significant thing. So. When you are presenting this presenting complaint, that oh, don't use the medical terminologies. Like especially when it comes to the gynae cases, don't use the terms like menorrhagia. Patient coming with menorrhagia, don't use it. You are going to commit suicide yourself. Okay, use the non-medical terms, patient terms like patient coming with regular heavy bleeding for six months duration. Something like that, or as you can in obstetrics, you can say patient coming with lower abdominal pain for few hours duration, say uh, ten hours duration, three hours duration, or patient coming with reduced fetal movements for five hours duration, patient coming with few episodes of pervaginal bleeding. You don't say antepartum hemorrhage; you say pervaginal bleeding. Like that, you use the non-medical terms. It's very important. Okay, don't use the medical terms when it comes to the uh, the presenting complaint. So presenting complaints will give us a clear idea about the patient's problem. Okay, patient may be having diabetes. Patient may be having some other problem, but her acute problem is abdominal pain. So you don't talk about the diabetes at that stage, but the main problem is abdominal pain. To talk about the abdominal pain, to tell about the abdominal pain. Okay, that will right. So, presenting complaint, you have to tell why patient came to the hospital. We will demonstrate all these things at the end. Then you will have a better understanding. All right. Any problem so far? Your bladder may be filled. Problems may be there like that. Other than that, any other problems? You may be hungry. You may be thirsty. Any other problems so far? So, what are the things that we have discussed so far? Any we have we discussed anything so far? Yes. What are the things that we have discussed so far? Mohammed Ambre. We discussed about the routine antenatal care in Sri Lanka. You all know preconception. What you have to do first time is like that. We discussed that. Then what we have discussed? If we are, once you have taken a why we are taking a history basically for the patient management. Then, how will you self assess? How will you do the self assessment about the competence of your history? Four components should be there. There should be a diagnosis. There should be a differential diagnosis. Diagnosis or differential diagnosis. Positive factors, complications, very important, and other factors. Now we are going to fill those factors with the history taking. First of all, we have given a nice, brief introduction about the patient, and we have to tell the examiner this is why she came to the hospital. She admitted for the confinement. What is confinement, Darwani? Delivery. Confinement is delivery. 
patient is now term, right? She was asked to admit today for the delivery. Okay, may one thing, right? Admitted for the confinement. All right? So likewise, you have to tell the presenting complaint. Then, thirdly, now we have told the patient, my patient is somebody like this, age is this, she is coming from this area, she is a professional like that, all blah, blah. And this is why she came to the hospital. Now you are going to dig in the story. So what is the confinement thing? Confinement means that of delivery. Confinement means delivery, in other words. You can say patient admitted for the delivery. If you want to show off, then you can say patient admitted for the confinement. Wow, brilliant student. Okay, like the data, brilliant student. Right. Now, now you are going to talk about the story about the patient. Now, that only boys. Now, suppose your mother has found a proposal for you all, right? A girl, right? And you are going to see this girl today. What are the things that you are interested about this girl? What are the things that you are interested about this girl? You are interested about past history. Boy, past history, but you are very particular about the girl's past history. It was a cold Something like that. So a lot of things were interested. So you are interested about the past history. Right? Then you are interested about the current thing. Then you are the last center lipstick, cute as a car, pick up or how to be a last center game. Whether she's attractive on a current situation. And then past history of the current situation, what next? Right? You plan out your near future. So your history also the same. When you're going to get a history, usually you start with the past obstetric history. Though. Okay, past obstetric history. Then you talk about the current pregnancy. And you're talking, we are going to talk about the, the, the future plan about this patient. Past obstetric history, when you come to current pregnancy, what are the things happen? And in after admission, what are things happen and what is the plan for this patient? Something like that. You have to gain information. Then past obstetric history. If you take the past obstetric history, that room, you don't go into extreme details about past obstetric history. You are going to present in a very summarized manner what are the any any complications happen in her past obstetric history of course this past obstetric history applicable is only for multiparous ladies not for primates primates they don't have past obstetric history you know? so multiparous ladies so suppose there is a patient this is her fourth pregnancy we'll say third pregnancy this is the third pregnancy first pregnancy she has the normal vaginal delivery. Second pregnancy, because her first trimester miscarriage. So, how will you summarize this past obstetric history? So, in past obstetric history, again, you can tell she is a mother of one child in her third pregnancy. Mother of one child in her third pregnancy. So, you can tell the examiner, sir, as I mentioned before. She is a mother of one child in her third pregnancy. Now we are going to dig into more little details. So in her first pregnancy, what are the things that you are interested? You don't divide into preconceptional first trimester, second trimester, third trimester, and all this. You overall ask from the patient. Palavini baba hamba venna gihilla one hari prashna tibbade. Devediyama pressure fit take a prashna tibbade. You don't ask Palavini Master to the Prashna Tibada, Devini Master to the Prashna Tibada, to Mini Master to the Prashna. No. Your Mukutta Vashane, in a summarized manner, you ask Palavini Baba, Hamba Venegila, Palavini Baba, Hamba Venegila, Devediava pressure, fit take a baggage, Prashna Tibada. 
put up name karane you just name few like diabetes sugar like those things right then mother will say no doctor no problems then ask about the delivery baba normal the hampune cease the hampune amma will say baba normal doctor hampune the last thing that you have to ask baba ge upat bar upat palane neve upat bar kiyat dipa birth weight that is important upat bar kiyat dipa okay right so what are the things that you are going to ask the road regarding the first pregnancy palavini baba hamba wenna gihilla ye wediyawa pressure fit eka wage prashna aawada baba normal the cease the hambune doctor uh, the patient might say adu dala gatta what is adu dana adu dala ganna what is adu dana forceps okay adu dala ganna means forceps okay normal the cease the hambune baba ge upat par kiyat dipa that is all you need to know about her first pregnancy ඒකන ඔක කියන්න ගත්තාම සමහරක් කියනවා ඒ දවස විතර ඩොක්ටර් ජයසිංහ VOG VOG තමයි පෙන්නේ කියන VOG තමයි ඇල්ලුවේ ඒකන අල්ලනවා නේ විල VOG තමයි ඇල්ලුවේ ඊටස යා මෙහෙම කිව්වා ඊට පස්සේ එතනින් මෙහාට යවුවා අර කයි මේ කයි බ්ලා 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 just ignore those things you straight away come to the point the media pressure fit එක වගේ ආව දම්මා බබා normal the cease the hump වුනේ බබාගේ උපත් බර කියත් තිබ්බද that's all only a few things okay then come to the second pregnancy it was a miscarriage ओके मिस करे ते ओके किया ना करता हमारे पूरा इमोशनल है ना मिस करे जा किन को टे पूरा इमोशनल है नहीं थी पूरा अंडर अंडर पुला नहीं था पूरा दुखिंग वाके किया ना पुला डॉक्टर देवनी बाबा ने तू ना नहीं ओ ऐसे दामा ऐसे डाबी ये वाले ही ना भी भी आना हाँ देने वाले बार ने पुला लाइक दैट वी डोंट स्माइल एट दैट टाइम राइट यू 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 अंडरस्टैंड द पेशेंट सिचुएशन आह मैं तो द मास की ये इंद बाबा ने तू दैट इज इम्पोर्टेंट मास की ये इंद बाबा ने तू मोस्ट ऑफ द मिसकैरेजेस आर विथ इन फर्स्ट 3 मंथ्स सो यू कैन से विथ दिस द फर्स्ट ट्राइमेस्टर मिसकैरेज ओ सेकंड ट्राइमेस्टर राइट सो मास की इन द बाबा ने दियो देन एक अबोर्शन ने कहा नंदा दो यू शुड नो हाउ इट वाज मैनेज्ड व्हाट आर द थ्री मैनेजमेंट ऑप्शन फॉर अ मिसकैरेज इन द आर गोना मेरे बटा व्हाट आर द थ्री मैनेजमेंट ऑप्शन फॉर अ मिसकैरेज थ्री मैनेजमेंट ऑप्शंस उटी Bada so the name is either D N C O E R T C, right? D N C O E R T C. So you have to ask from the patient. Baba ni kamma in belagi aade, peti dal ayin karade, netam bada wash karala ayin karade, so the la ayin karade. That's all you should know about the uh, miscarriages. If the patient says. डॉक्टर एक देवनी बाबा नाल बाबे के डॉक्टर ओ ऐसे दे नाल बाबा मींस व्हाट नाल एक नाल ए मींस ट्यू एक टॉपिक ओके सो देन यू हैव टू आस्क एक टॉपिक ना लंका इज नॉर्मली एक्सपेक्टेड मैनेज कराने एक टॉपिक एक अपना ऑपरेशन करा दे कैमरा वक्त दार दो ऑपरेशन करे बाढ़ खापल दो ऑपरेशन करे व्हाट इज दैट आई द लैपरोस्कोपी ओ लैपरोटॉमी कैन यू प्लीज रिपीट दोस थ्री मैनेजमेंट्स इन सिंगल टर्म्स यस expected management baba nikamma ayin vela giya da mukut kare nanta nikamma ayin vena okay expected management medical management is tablets them other peti them other erpc means daro bada wash kara da bada seedu ada okay so sir three things right so if it was ectopic you have to ask from the patient camera wak dal operation kara da nanta bada couple operation kara da So likewise, that you have to ask briefly about these things. So how will you present these things to the examiner? So from the beginning, you have to tell she is a mother of one child, mother of one child in her third pregnancy. 
So first pregnancy was uncomplicated. She first pregnancy was uncomplicated. She had a vaginal delivery. Birth date of the baby was 3.1 kg. The second pregnancy, she was ended up in the first trimester miscarriage, which was managed medically. And this is the third pregnancy. Okay, so don't worry, Daruni. This is your first day. This is completely new to y'all, right? I hope so, right? So you may not confident with these things, but we, when the time comes, when we go on, we will discuss these things again and again. And at the end, you will be better, much confident than myself. So don't worry about it. Right. Introduction we have done, presenting complaint we have done, and past obstacles. It's always better to mention about this past obstetric history at the beginning. But remember, don't talk in details about past obstetric history. Then the, your history becomes so boring. Right? Your history becomes so boring if you spend more time on these things, especially past obstetric. It should be one or two sentences maximum. Finish it off. And that way, when you are presenting your history, it's better if you can present the history without looking at the paper. You have jot down everything on your paper, but don't look at the paper always. You just look at the examiner's eyes and keep eye contact with the examiner. Kinkini, if I'm looking at you all the time, what will happen to you? Or we will ask about the Charita. Charita, if I'm looking at you all the time, what will happen to you? I'll feel uncomfortable, sir. Sorry? I'll feel uncomfortable. You feel uncomfortable and you can't remember whatever I am telling. You can't, you are, you can't pay your concentration. Right? Same thing happened in the exam also. Though. If you look at the examiner's face straight away, suppose you are a nice looking girl. Nice looking man. No, no, you are a girl. Male examiner. If you are looking at the examiner's face, eyes all the time, then for a sure, 100% sure, he will lose his consciousness also, right? He will lose his concentration on what you are telling. So even though you miss something, that will not be picked up. That shows that you are a confident person. So always maintain eye contact with the examiner when you are present in the room. You, have, you know how to how they present in this news, right? So same way, don't look at the paper. You just look at the audience. Look at the examiner. Okay. If you're always looking at the paper, um, um, may patient, this patient came la, 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 like that, then you are just sit down so boring. Then the examiner, boring me like, wow, not pass it. They will ask a patient to knock you off. Right. So always maintain eye contact with the examiner. Then not come on the examiner. Some examiners are staring, maybe staring at you. Okay. Like that. In number two, something like that. But you smile and you have an eye contact with the examiner. You smile and you present. Okay, right? Very careful and very important. That is your past obstetric history. Take 20 seconds off. So, so we, we will we will practice those things uh, right uh, each each and every case that we are going to discuss uh, in future. I will practice you all how to present your cases, how to summarize, how to identify problems, how to sort out those things. Right in the exam, though, in, when it comes to the wider exams, you don't have to remember about in detail about patient management. Right. You have to know only about very few basic things, but those with basic things you can score marks. Even you can talk about a full blood count in several minutes. Okay? And you can gain more marks. We will come to those points later. Don't worry. Anything, any problem so far, Darwani? Aruna Chamind, Tiumi Pamodya, Puvilochan, any problem so far? Good. You guys are awake, isn't it? Still not sleepy. Good. Right. Now, what are the things we have done so far? We are going slowly, right? Introduction we have done, 
presenting. We have called the examiner. Sir, this is why she came to the hospital, and one of the other few things that were right. Now we all are doctors, right? I'm a doctor. You are also going to be doctors, right? And there are junior doctors, senior doctors like that. But when it comes to the exam, for the examiners, for the for the consultants, don't say doctor. This is applicable in other countries. I know that when you work in other countries, everybody come and tell you doctor. That's all, right? Or they just tell you your name. But when you come to Sri Lanka, people have a big ego. If you are a consultant, you they think that some of them think that you are a big person, big foot, right? So always tell them, sir or madam. Don't say doctor in the exam. Definitely, you will have to come back for ERPM classes again and again if you tell like that. Okay. Always say, sir or madam. This is Sri Lanka, Sri Lankan culture. Okay. Right. So introduction we have done. Presenting complaint, past of sleep, see. Next come to the current pregnancy. Current pregnancy. Current pregnancy. When you come to current pregnancy, there, what are the areas that you need to talk about? Preconceptional. Preconceptional. Then you have talked about the pregnancy dating. I'll come to that point. Dating. Come to the first trimester second trimester and third trimester and after admission what happened those are the areas that you need to talk about then of your outcome we have given an introduction about the patient we have told the examiners uh, this kind of a patient we are going to deal with and this is why she came to the hospital her uh, obstetric history is like this and now we are come to the current pregnancy Preconceptionally, what are the things preconceptionally that you have mentioned that one? You have to tell them that, tell the examiner that whether this is a planned pregnancy or an unplanned pregnancy. Planned or not. Planned or not. What do you mean by planned pregnancy? Planned pregnancy. What do you all mean by planned pregnancy, Darwin? Planned pregnancy, to be a planned pregnancy, they should be expecting a pregnancy. And the other thing is, they have to take preconceptional folic acid. Right? So, Babek Balakurotwing Hitiade, Nathan Aham been the pregnant to her. It's important to ask one patient. Babek Bala, were you expecting a baby? Balakurotwing. Sign up. Balakurotwing Hitiade. Babek Balakurotwing Hitiade. Babek Balakurot, were you expecting a baby? Mother will say yes. Ne, Dr. Peter Balakurotwati, been happy, Babek. That is not a planned pregnancy, isn't it? Then you have to ask from the patient whether you have taken preconceptional folic acid. Baba badate in na kaling idang folic acid gatta. Pregnant when na kaling idang folic acid gatta. Somebody asking what is the importance of knowing planned pregnancy? Planned pregnancy, they plan everything, especially they take folic acid, preconceptional folic acid. That is the importance of knowing that. Okay. So, Babek Bala Porotwing Hitiade, Baba Badate in the Kalimita, folic acid Gattade. Then, same time, ask about the rubella vaccinations. Rubella Velata Behit with the Latina mother. At the rubella vaccine, the quarantine. Rubella vaccine, the quarantine. Okay. Clear that one? Is that clear? Right? So, what are the things preconception that you have to ask that one? You have to ask whether this is a planned pregnancy or not. Plan, if this is a planned pregnancy, they should have been on. Must have been on preconceptional folic acid. And meantime, ask whether she is immunized for rubella. All these things you have to ask. And one more question I got. 
How long we should take folic acid before pregnancy? Yes. Ideally, at least before three months prior to pregnancy, over the last three months, she has to be on, she should be on folic acid therapy. Okay, at least three months prior to pregnancy, the, you should start them on folic acid. That is the importance of coming for preconceptional pre counseling. But most of the patients in Sri Lanka, they do everything heart disease patient, type mitrostenosis, you know, but between Aragon, Okogil, Hanimono, Gila, pregnant Pilatamai, 10 weeks already to the hospital. But that is not the ideal management. All right. So, any problems so far that only these are the patients that we have asked from the preconceptional time. Then talked about dating. It's very, very important to know about the dating of pregnancy because everything in pregnancy, the management, whole management depends on the number of weeks or the maturity of the baby. So, in your history, you have to make sure that patient is having a correct date or wrong dates or uncertain dates. How you can clarify those doubts, Daru? How you can certain about the patient's dating indicator? Right. Clinically, you have to ask prior to conception whether she had regular menstrual cycles. If the cycles were regular, you can assume that she was ovulating before pregnancy, normally ovulating. That means her dates are most likely correct. Okay, so ask from the patient prior to conception whether you had regular cycles. Pregnant when the calling, pili valata menses hadunate. Pili valata or sub bima kila kena pra menses kuam goda kaidanwa, right? Menses. Pregnant when the calling, pili valata menses hadunate. Pili valata means that basically you are worried about monthly cycles. Navasgana dates can go here and there, but at least once per month whether you had bleeding prior to conception. So boys, if your girlfriend is having regular cycles, before marriage, you are worried. Why? She's fertile. After marriage, you are happy because she's fertile, so you can have a child. So regular cycles means usually patient is ovulating. She's fertile. Then make a give command some argus like a multi ambuluna, maga cycle regular any. So with the I am suffered, I know not always, but regular cycles means that we usually they are fertile. So ask from the page. Prior to conception, whether you had regular cycles were regular, you have asked the first day of last menstrual period. Antimata means us had. Hello, can, sorry, can you all see me now, Darwo? Is that okay now? Okay, sorry. Right. So we were talking about the if so before pregnancy, you have to ask whether she had regular cycles. Okay. So how you can ask about that thing, Darwo? You have to ask from the patient prior to conception whether you had regular uh, pregnant when the culling have a mass of a menses head. Then you have to ask first day of last menstrual period that is called lrmp lrmp first day of last regular menstrual period how do you ask about that thing in singular antimata menses had in 
patanga to dabasa kabat. So, Jeevan, can you understand that? You can understand a little bit of Sinhala, isn't it? Antimata, what is what was the first day of last menstrual period? Antimata means a sedent of patanga, you were which of us anyway, first day of last menstrual period. Say, for example, patient is now coming with pregnancy. She had her last period November 3rd. She started bleeding on November 3rd and bleeding stopped on November 7th. So which day you have to take? November 3rd or 7th? First day of last menstrual period. That means November 3rd. Her LRMP is November 3rd. Something like that. Okay, November 3rd. So you have to ask about the last menstrual period. Why you want to know about the last menstrual period, Daru? Jahani, why do you want to know about the last menstrual period? Because if you know the last menstrual period, and if she had regular cycles before pregnancy, you can, ca uh, you can calculate the expected day of delivery. Yes, good. Expected day of delivery. How will you calculate the expected day, Daru? You have to add nine months plus seven days to the last menstrual period. But if the patient, yes, good patient, right? I'll come to that point later, right? Yeah. So if the patient said, doctor, before pregnancy, I had normal cycles, doctor. Then you have to ask, okay, then what was your last menstrual period, the first day of last menstrual period? Or as patient will say, doctor, before pregnancy, my cycles were irregular, right? I'm, I was getting my bleeding once in three months, two months time. Then is there any point of asking about last menstrual period? No. Then you have to purely go according to the ultrasound scan. If the cycles were irregular or if the patient can't remember about the cycle, at last menstrual period, then you have to go for, then you have to go for a scan and find the dates. On the other hand, Darwin, prior to conception, if the patient was on any contraceptives like OCP, like BMP, again, last menstrual period is utterly useless. Okay, so you have to ask about last menstrual period, Darwin, if the patient had regular cycles prior to conception and she had not been on any contraceptives before pregnancy. Okay, clear, right? Right, good. So, and then you have to ask from the patient, now you're going to take the history, you have to ask from the patient whether she had underwent a dating scan and whether the dates were corrected or not. How to, how to ask about the dating scan? Mulmasa tunay de scan ne kakkara de dina hari ki uvad. Mulmasa tunay de scan ne kakkara de dina hari ki uvad. And you can ask from the patient when is your expected day of delivery. You can ask from the patient when is your expected day of delivery. Okay, right. So this dating problem is very important because in obstetrics, that work, everything depends on the dating. So it's very important to know about the correct dating. Okay. Just give me one second, Darwin.
Okay, Daru. So we will have the break in uh, after about 15 minutes. Okay, All right. So current pregnancy, you have to ask for the preconception at time. Then the dating, very important. Ask whether the cycles were regular or not before pregnancy, whether she has taken any kind of F25 pregnancy, and ask what when was the last first day of last menstrual period. And ask for the patient what is the expected day of delivery. How to calculate EDD? If you know the regular, if the patient had regular cycles before, and if the last menstrual period is known, you add nine months plus seven days. For an example, to be, make it easy, suppose her last menstrual period was January 1st. We say 1st January 2022. When should be the expected day of delivery? At nine months plus seven days. When you add months here, it will be October. Seven days here, it will be 8 October 2022. Should be the expected day of delivery. Like that, you add nine months plus seven days, and you can ask from the patient, and you can double check if the patient gives the same, almost, I mean, somewhere closer, then you can uh, see your date is correct. Question asks, should we calculate POG also? No, Daru, POG means uh, the period of gestation. That is a better word. Another word is period of amen or POA. Both are same. Both are same. There's a slight difference, but what we calculate is actually POG, period of gestation. Period of gestation. But don't confuse. Even though you say period of amenorrhea or period of gestation, almost same. There's a small difference. Slight difference, but just ignore it. Don't make it complicated by yourself. <laughs> okay. So, dating. And after that, come to the first trimester. What are the things that you have to ask about the first trimester? What are the complications they can get in the first trimester, Daru? Bleeding and congenital infection. Those are two important things. So ask from the patient, Palavini Masa Tunedi, Legiad, Legia, bleeding, Rattam Porda, Unad. First three months, Rattam Porda, Legiad, and then bleed to Nad. Pulua. Either one say, Fever with fresh, any fever with fresh, especially during the first trimester. Unat take and a rash check up covered. Hasalama pen and the pull up patient and a rash check up covered. Unat take fever with rashes. Important to ask about congenital infections. Mulmas to me the legia the summer. Unahedilla, fresh check up covered the indicator. Right? Like that, you have to ask from the patient whether you had these things. Okay, Kinkini. And what are the vitamins that you have to take? Folic acid gatta the mulmastomedi. Important. Folic acid gatta the bleed to nada, fever with rash, the next important thing is about the booking visit. You have to ask about the booking visit. Booking visit will give you more weight in the first trimester. You should know everything about booking visit. What are the booking visit taken? What are the things that you have to know about booking visit? You have to ask for the patient when was the booking visit happen? Sati ki in the doctor can come back. Natan clinic kekagatagi, sati ki in the when. Where? Kohedagi. Kohedagi kila kani. Right? Whether she has gone to the local clinic or whether she has gone to a hospital clinic. Gamay clinic kicker the gay, let them hospital clinic kicker the gay. Molimma clinic gay, sati ki in the patient we say sati the high end doctor. Hari, eat a pass say Gamay clinic kicker the gay, hospital clinic kicker the patient we say hospital clinic. Then you have to ask what are the things done in the booking visit? Oyagi vista rehuad, parit shakar labeluad, lay mutra check karad. Munadahani. Kingini, what are the patients that you're going to ask? Well, Pariksha, we are going to be the history taken. But you have to show that you know about this stuff. Okay, Pramodi? Right? Bistarehuad, Pariksha Karlabal Examination. Then, 
blood and urine investigation le mutra chakra you can ask from the patient e wage reports kohomada most of the patient they don't know they, they are unaware about the values but they know whether there is abnormal or normal patient will say mugut prashnayak nae kiwa doctor at the hemoglobin adu kiwa doctor then you know the problem for pressure ka vadi kiwa doctor then you know the problem like that okay all right so you have to ask from the patient le mutra check kara e wage prashna mona hari thiyena wa kiwa kalin blood group ka han namata guna na here you can ask about the blood group mokadda le varge samira okay you can ask about the blood group then what is the most important thing dating scan mul masa tune scan ekak karada dina hari kiwada baba hodin inna kiwada something like that you can ask about the dating scan then come to the second trimester what are the second trimester things that you have to ask darwa iron and calcium supplements yakad saha calcium peti dunnada yakad saha calcium peti dunnada iron and calcium supplements okay tetanus toxoid tetanus toxoid how do you ask in the sinhala daru it's a tetanus toxoid pita gasma ta behet vidda the pita gasma ne vei pita gasma pita gasma means tetanus pita gasma ta behet vidda okay mohammed can understand it should be top sinhala right okay so yakada calcium peti dunnada pita gasma ta behet vidda primes if it, if she is a prime you can ask behet dekak vidda if it is multi you can ask eka behet aida vidde okay nusrat right okay anisha now in the we are in the second trimester you have asked about iron and calcium supplements tetanus toxoid what is next anomaly scan next step is the anomaly scan so how do you ask about the anomaly scan in skin color mass pahe scan ne ka karad some patients most of the educated patient they know about the anomaly scan so depending on the patient's education level you can ask anomaly scan ne ka karad otherwise you can ask from any patient mass pahe scan ne ka karad mass pahe scan means anomaly scan and ek prashnaya thi na ki wada any problem detected rubella is given for all pregnant pregnant women is daru we don't give rubella it's contraindicated if someone is not immune for rubella you have to give rubella pre conceptionally before pregnancy during pregnancy we don't give rubella remember okay it's contraindicated postpartum you can give but during pregnancy rubella is contraindicated okay sirasa tv ke muna lokuwada bala ganna onna facebook ke muna lokuwada bala ganna onna if you want you can give rubella during pregnancy and these people will publish in social media and everywhere you will be a well known person on the following day right so masa pahe scan ekak karada prashna thiyena kiwa what is next ravi lakmal what is next next is diabetic screening daru you have to ask from the patient amma sati 28 edi vitare glucose parikshane karada glucose parikshane glucose test or you can ask from the about the ogtt or as you can ask from the patient glucose parikshane karada glucose parikshane karada eka hondai kiwada de wedi yawa thiyenawa kiwada something like that okay right then second trimester is over come to the third trimester any special things no then ask from the patient antima masa tuna idi mona hari prashna tibbada amma pressure eka ehema tibbada baba ge vardane hondai kiwada mona hari prashna tibbada antima masa tuna idi avasana masa tuna idi mona hari prashna tibbada 
patient we say na doctor baba ge vardare hondai kiyala kiwa mukut prashna ak tibbe ne i'm talking about uncomplicated case on the first day okay then now we know she has admitted for the confinement she is now say 41 week she admitted for the confinement then you have to ask at the end after admission monawada kare then admit not pass wada kakkuma thiyenawada baba hondara dangalenawa denenawada pulle nalla tudi kirida after admission baba hondara dangalenawa denenawada bade kakkuma thiyenawada ehem mukot ne oyage scan kara dawada passe baba hondai kiyuwada all these things you can ask scan kara da baba hondai kiyuwada patiyak gatta da what is this pati ctg patiyak gatta da eka hondai kiyuwada then you can ask from the patient at last then mukada karana ki we or peti dala kakku mahadana ki wada batayak dana ki wada what is the future plan peti dana means prostaglandins batayak dana means uh, folic acid induction something like that that is your obstetric history what are the things in the obstetric history darwane now from the beginning from the beginning introduction everyone 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 look at me everyone don't look at my gray hair but look at my face right okay so now we are going to take the history what is the first thing introduction namo mukakta vaisa kiyeda kohe nandawe job ekak karnawada ki weni parata the pregnant une ki weni parata the pregnant une le warge mokakta amma ai oya hospital ekata ave presenting complaint baba hamba wenna doctor mata ada admit wenna kiwa eka yawe confinement okay then start with the past obstetric history palaweni baba hamba wenna kiyala monohari prashna tibbada diye wedi yawa pressure monohari aawada baba normal the sees the hambune baba ge upad bara kiya tibbada deweni baba mukada une amma wenna say baba nathi una maasa kiyenda nathi une amma maasa tunne doctor ah entada mukada kare baba nikamma ai mera giyada peti dammada bada seeduwada okay then that's all about past obstetric come the current pregnancy pre conceptionally me para me baba ogolam babi bala porutwe hitiya da nattha no den watta da pregnant hone na doctor me babi bala porutwe hitiya plan pregnancy ama folic acid gatta da baba badata inna kalin yes mada will say maas tuna hatara kalin da folic acid gatta that's good rubella walata behet idila tiyana da oh doctor is pole yana kale vidala tibba right pre conceptional poly plan or not folic acid rubella that's good come to the current pregnancy then dating pregnant wenna kalin pilivalita menses hadunada na doctor mata pilivalak ehema naha mata matakak naha harita hadicha dawas then is there a point of asking about the last menstrual period no okay no because it's useless then then you can ask from the patient mul maasa thule de scan karala baba ge dinna haduwada oh doctor kawadda baba hamba wenna dibu dine patient will say maartu uh, pass wenda thamai doctor baba hamba wenna dibu dine something like that okay edd charitha as big a pa way gena gena that's how you get the edd right then that room now date we have discussed come to the first trimester mul maasa thule de amal le yama kima tibbada rattam poruda tibbada ne fever with rash ekak mo una hadila enge palu dala wage tibbada rash ekak tibbada ne doctor මුලින්ම ඩොක්ටර් කෙනෙක් හරි ක්ලිනික් එකට ගියේ සති කීයෙන්ද සති 10 ඉන්න විතර වගේ ඩොක්ටර් හයි එතකොට ඔයාගේ ගමේ ක්ලිනික් එකකටද ගියේ නැත්නම් හොස්පිටල් එකකටද හොස්පිටල් එකට තමයි ඩොක්ටර් ගියේ අපේ හොස්පිටල් එක ළඟයි ඩොක්ටර් රයිට් දෙන් ඊට පස්සේ දෙන් යු හැව් ටු ආස්ක් ඕකේ ඒ ක්ලිනික් එකට ගියාට පස්සේ ඔයාව වගේ විස්තර අහන්න ඇති නේද අම්මා patient will say yes patient don't let the patient to talk too much right you give a direct uh, close questions විස්තර අහන්න ඇති නේද අම්මා patient will say yes ඔය පරීක්ෂා කරලා බලන්න ඇති ලේ මුත්‍ර චෙක් කරාද ඔව් ඩොක්ටර් ඒක චෙක් කරා ඒ වගේ ප්‍රශ්න තියෙනවා කිව්වද නෑ ඩොක්ටර් මුත් ප්‍රශ්නයක් නැහැ කිව්වා ඔය ලේ වර්ගයේ ඕ පොසිටිව් කියලා නේද කිව්වේ ඔව් සම්තිං ලයික් දැට් යු කන්ෆර්ම් රයිට් ඊට පස්සේ අම්මා මොල් මාස තුරේ ඒ වගේ ස්කෑන් එකක් කරාද ඔව් ඩොක්ටර් බබා හොඳට ඉන්නවා කිව්වද ඔව් ඩොක්ටර් ඒකෙන්ද දින හැදියේ ඔව් ඩොක්ටර් සම්තිං ලයික් ඩේටින් ස්කෑන් ද කම් ටු ද සෙකන්ඩ් ට්‍රයිමෙස්ටර් අප දෙවෙනි මාස තුනේ ඊට පස්සේ ඔය මාස සති 12 පැනට පස්සේ කැල්සියම් යකඩ පෙන්න බොන්න කියලා දෙන්නේ නැති නේද yes පිට ගැස්මට බෙහෙතක් විද්දද ඔව් රයිට් මාස 5 ස්කෑන් එක කරාද ඔව් 
ප්‍රශ්න තියෙනවා කවද නැහැ සති 28 එක ග්ලූකෝස් ටෙස්ට් එක කරාද ඔව් ඒක ප්‍රශ්න තියෙනවා කවද නැහැ අන්තිම මාස තුනේදී ආම ඔයාලට ප්‍රෙෂර් ආවද නෑ ඩොක්ටර් බබාගේ වර්ධනය හොඳයි කවද ඔව් ඩොක්ටර් දැන් ඇඩ්මිට් වුණාට පස්සේ අම්මා ඔයාලට කැක්කුම තියෙනවද නෑ බබා හොඳට දඟලනවද නෑනවද ඔව් ලේයා මක් එහෙම මොන හරි තියෙනවද එහෙම පුත් නෑ ඩොක්ටර් මොකද කරනවා කිව්වා අම්මා ඩොක්ටර් කිව්වා හෙට විතර ටැබ්ලට් දානවා කියලා නැත්තම් බටයක් දානවා කියලා සම්තින් ලයික් that is also we will do it practically right then at the end daro you can ask about the, the routine things like past medical history past surgical history kali mono hari pregnant wedding kali de wedding operation mahal dilla thiyena da pappe prashna dilla thiyena da operation karala thiyena da allergies how to ask about allergies in sinhala karappan danawa da karappan kappan ne wei karappan kappan ganne politicians lane karappan खरपंदी family income you can ask about family income gedara gas thiyena de mahanna epa den me dawasana right family income you can ask husband mokadda karana job ekak oya job ekak karanna nae kiwa ethara husband kiyak ethara maasara saamanyen hamba wenawada gedara babawa bala ganna e pramane ek dukana jeevath wenne e pramane athida hari de ida den oya hospital inna kaale visheshama specially ask about this patient oya hospital ekak inna babawa bala ganne kawuda කවුරුත් නැහැ ඩොක්ටර් හස්බන්ඩ්ට තමයි බලා ගන්න වෙලා තියෙන්නේ. ඒක වෙයාට ජොබ් එකට යන්න බෑ නේද? ඔව්. so those are the social issues. try to obtain social issues because i will tell you all the importance of social issues uh, when we come to the the remaining classes. it's very important. income how much about income and who is there at home to look after the kid. that is really important. that completes your obstetric history taking. okay so before we uh, go to the break daro can i take 5 minutes from you all can i take 5 minutes from you all and shall i show you all how to take and basic obstetric history practically is that okay daro are you in, are you hungry can you wait for 5 minutes okay right can somebody volunteer for me to give a history so i will be the candidate don't worry you will be your my patient so i'll be asking question from you all same as that we are in the exam rest of you guys will be the examiners honorable examiners name bana ginda puluwa i am the student poor student and some of you will give me the history thinking that you are a patient okay so anisha since the time uh, time factor is there right can you volunteer for me to give a history okay right good girl Okay, so you can give any history, but don't give complicated one like diabetes, uh, RH negative, but the simple history at the beginning. Okay, right. Okay, that's good. Now everybody listen and have a look. Okay, so see whether, see how I am going to take this history from her. I am the candidate. She is my patient. You guys are the honorable examiners. Wow. Okay, so till. at the end if i have done any mistakes but even i can do mistakes right uh subha suppose this morning time okay uh, subha udayasana kamma subha udayasana doctor uh, mama medical student kenek man wage bistara podak gahana kamak nahi the kamak nahi ha right hari mata kiyana wage nama mokadda kiyala mage nama anisha 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 ani kiyala mokadda dilki दूरा ඉගෙන ගන්නවා ආ රයිට් ඕකේ ඉගෙන ගන්න මොන ප්‍රෙග්නන්ට් වුනේ හරි කමක් නැහැ රයිට් ජස්ට් ජෝකින් රයිට් සෝ රයිට් හරි 
so I got her name, age. Uh, she's a she's a student, right? A student, and um, she's not uh, occupied at the moment, right? Right. Matakya Nama, ki many part of Danisha, we are pregnant to name part. Palavini part. Palavini part. I became a part killer Nisha. I became a teacher kinnik or teacher kinnik or the part. I want to show them that how to get the his Devani part of the part, right? Hurry. Again, Nama Anisha, Dilki Anisha, she is 27 years old. This is supposed this is a third pregnancy. Too many parts of my pregnant to name it. Right. Babala ki dili kino Danisha? ഗുഡ്മോർണിംഗ് സർ my patient is my patient okay always tell my patient husband like an extra patient you tell my patient is my patient is mrs dilki anisha she is 27 years old mother of two children in her third pregnancy see the way i am presenting mother of two children in her third pregnancy she is from piliandal area she is from piliandal area it's about 15 kilometers away from the hospital she is a teacher You see, teacher, right? And her blood group is A positive. Okay, you should not spend more than one or two minutes maximally for the introduction. Okay, right. Next, Matakya and Anisha, are you going to the hospital? Ah, uh, my brother is going to me. Ekaya. Brother is going to me. Ekaya. Okay. Then, Sathi, what are you going to do, Anisha? Ah, uh, then Sathi is going to be there. Oh, then Sathi Kiya ke na the babat then Sathi Kiya ke tarva ke na the pregnancy ke. Ah, uh, then um, Sathi visti pahak pa ke na. Good that we will take those histories later. That will be familiar, you know, all right? I just want to show them that a basic is term history that you admitted for a confinement. Okay, we will say uh, you are now forty-one weeks. You admitted for the delivery. We will go like that. Okay, good that you are giving different story, but I just want to. Tell them basically of history. Okay, hurry. Then, ah, Sathi Hathali Sekhak pe naat wani. Na mai ke dinna paula dawa Sathak ki tarve na wa. Baba hamba pe na tamai wa admit hone ne. Right. Good. So, what is the presenting company for the confinement? For the confinement. Okay. Good. Now, we are to start with. Can you all see me now, Daru? So yes, okay. We have to start with. So you have to start with the past obstetric history in a summarized manner. Hari Anisha, matte ki anne. Wage phalevi ni baba ham bave ne gihila. Diye ve diya wo pressure ek fit ek wage monwa hari le dethi pa je. Na na, eh mukutti pa. Eh mukutti pa ne. Hari. Baba normal the ham bune see sadh. Normal. Normal ham bune. Baba ke upad bar kiya thi badama. ിസ്റ്റിക് <laughs> 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 as i mentioned you earlier sir you can tell as i mentioned you earlier sir she is a mother of two children in a third pregnancy her first two pregnancies were uncomplicated and she had two vaginal deliveries birth weight of the babies were 3.5 and 3.1 kg respectively you don't have to talk individually first pregnancy uncomplicated normal delivery birth weight this one second pregnancy la 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 no you summarize everything you can tell her first two pregnancies were uncomplicated she had normal vaginal deliveries and birth weight of the babies were 3.5 and 3.1 kg see i'm i'm summarizing as much as possible that is important because that is not the main thing to talk about the current pregnancy 
only important positive and important negative things about the past obstetric history you have to mention. Okay, Daru, is that clear? Right, good. Okay, are you guys with me now? Right, where are we now? I have given the introduction, presenting complaint, past obstetric history, I have finished. Now I am come to the current pregnancy. Hari Anisha, up to main pregnancy again, Kata Karamu, or the main seri, Babik Balapurutu in preconception, right? Babik Balapurutu in the heat in a tongue, a humbling bag, no, then what to get pregnant today? No, then what to get? No, then what to make a Babik Balapurutu in either. Folic acid name and got the other may Baba Badate in a Kali? Nahan. Folic acid got it, nay, Hari. Calling rubella way to Vidalati in other is Colana Kali, rubella vaccine in Karantino. So P comes conceptionally, what are things that you can tell? This was not a planned pregnancy and patient had not taken preconceptional folic acid. However, she can remember she was immunized against rubella. That is preconceptional. Okay, Daru. Come to the next step. What is the next step? Dating. Matakiya Anisha. Pregnant pain, necessary pregnant pain, a Kali, Pilibal to Mensa said another. Have a mass of a Mensa said another. Oh, have a mass of a Mensa said another. What a Mataka the Antimata Mensa said in the Patanga to the Vasu. February Hatten. Now, her last menstrual period was. 7 Feb 2021. So, if you want, you can calculate the EDD and C. Exercise. Calculate EDD and C. Add 9 months plus 7 days. When you add 9 months here, 9 plus, we will say to make it complicated, we will make it uh, uh, April 7. Okay, April 7. So when you add 9 here, 9 plus 4, 13. 13 means 1 year and 1 month. That year should go here, then, then it's uh, 2022, 1 month, that means January. You add 7 here, 14. January 14th is her EDD. Now it's correct. Isn't it? January 14th. Can you calculate in that way? I suppose most to, most of you guys, almost all of you would have passed your uh, scholarship exam. This is one of the things that comes in scholarship exam. Okay. I was failed. I don't know even my marks, right? But this is how you add months and dates. Years should be added to years. Months should be added to months. But when it is more than 12, it should go as one month, one month, and one year. Year should go there, and the dates here. All right. Okay. Right. Hari. This is how you calculate it. Hari. Ito ora ani isha babik balapurut wing hiti ne hai folic acid karna karte nai ni sa. Or abe pilibar te mensa sadhu na kiwa ne idh. April hadu thamai anti mada hari lati ne first day of last menstrual period. Anti mada mensa sadhu na patangat te davas. April hat penida. Antimata means a sedin patanga to the vessel. April hat penida. So you have to ask that question specifically from the patient. Antimata means a sedin patanga to the vessel. Okay, Daru. Yes, sir. Right? Then. So. If you know the last menstrual period, you can calculate the ED. If the patient was uncertain about last menstrual period, you can ask, Hari Mata Masa Pumedi Anisha, scan the Kakaran at Yagan either. Scan the Kendina Hari Kelaki, what is Oh, Hari Hari, right. So we are certain about the dates now. Preconceptional dating, next thing is the first trimester. Matakian, Mulmasa Tunedi, Lea Makimono Hari Tipad. Naham is the Tibun. Una Cadillanica and Rashi Katwagi Paluda Lavagi Monati Paddy? No, but good name. Then, 
අපි අටකින් වගේ හරි ඔය ක්ලිනිකයට ගියේ හොස්පිටල් එකේ ක්ලිනික් එකට නැත්තම් මිඩ් වයිෆ් එකේ ක්ලිනික් එකටද එම්ඔ්ච් ක්ලිනික් එකටද ආ එම්ඔ්ච් ක්ලිනික් එම්ඔ්ච් ක්ලිනික් එකට හරි එතනදී වාගේම් විස්තර අහන්න නැති නේද ඔව් ඔය පරීක්ෂා කරලත් බලන්න නැති නේද ලේ මුත්‍ර චෙක් කරාද ඔව් චෙක් කරා ලේ මුත්‍ර චෙක් කරා ඒ වගේ ප්‍රශ්නයක් තියෙනවා කියලා කිව්වද නැහැ ඔක්කොම හොඳයි කිව්වා ඔක්කොම හොඳයි කියලා කිව්වා රයිට් වාගේ ලේ වර්ගයේ ඒ පොසිටිව් කියලා කිව්වා නේද हाँ इट वाज़ मूल मास तो नहीं थे एक वाला मार्ट स्कैन निकल कुछ मैं करागन ने क्या किया नहीं थे नहीं तो करेगा तब दे ओ करा बाय एक दिन डेट सारे घरी के लक्की हुआ नहीं बाबा हमारे इन्वा के लक्की हुआ नहीं थे हाँ एक बाबा इन्हें इन्वा की भी नहीं थे सिंगल सिंगल ओ मल्टीपल यू हैव टू आस्क मैं एक बाबा इन දෙන්න නැහැ ෆීඩ් බැක් නැද මේ ඩිස්කස් ලේට කියලා රයිට් ඕකේ ඒක මම මේක ඉන්නවා කියලා කිව්වා බබා හොඳයි කොහොමද දින හරි කියලා කිව්වා now come to the second trimester මට කියන්න මුල් මාස 3 පැන්නට පස්සේ වට කැල්සියම් යකට පෙති දුන්නද ඔව් හරි ඒව ගන්නවා නේද ඔව් හරි පිට ගැස්මට බෙහෙත් එකක් විදින්නේ නැති නේද ඔව් ඔව් විද්ද බම්බුව පිට ගැස්මට එකයි විදින්නේ මේ තුන්වෙනි බබානේ पिता के ऐसे में टेक भी तक पीता नहीं है। ओ एक आई। ओके आप जस्ट जोकिंग राइट। अरे पिता के ऐसे में भी तक भी इधर दारू। जाकर टेक ऐसे एमपी तो दोनों। मास पहले यार एनोमली स्कैन के निकल कर आधा माँ। ओके। एक ही बाबा के मनोहर प्रश्न थी ना क्या लगी हुआ थी? नहीं। ये मनाया नहीं थी। इधर पसे साथी बीसीआर हाँ एक ही पार प्रश्न आप मनवा देते हैं ना क्या लगते हुआ था दिए बड़ी आवाज़ देती है ना तो वो तो नया क्यों हुआ था नहीं नहीं क्यों बाय नाउ तो सेकंड ट्राइमेस्टर इज़ ओवर कम तो थर्ड ट्राइमेस्टर मटर की है ना अंतिम आवाज़ तो मैं दिया मैं वाटर प्रेशर मनवा रही आवाज़ है नहीं हम किसी प्रश्न क्यों प्रश्न � after admission then what body ek ek tuma he mona hari prashna thiyena wada ah thama thiyena wada ek thama thiyena podi body ek ek mat thiyena neda body koi hariyen thiyena yata yata hariyenda uda hariyata wenna wageda ah yata hariyata wenna kakkuma ekada dikara thiyena wada nathan saren sare wageda enne ah saren sare wage saren sare wage enne hari so if a patient complain of something like abdominal pain you have to analyze the abdominal pain that's a separate topic i will discuss with you all later how to analyze the abdominal pain okay sight uh, the radiation severity what kind of pain and all these things you have to ask so basically you have to ask intermittent or constant pain right like that okay right baba hodara dagalwa denawada amma oh nane leya ma kwatura yama ke mona hari thiyenada rattam poruda thanni poruda illai na ehema bye then uh, aawata passe scan ekak ehema mona hari karada oh ultrasound ekak अरे बाबा हैरी लाइन नॉक के लकी हुआ था नेतन तट्टा मिंग इन नॉक की हुआ था व्हाट इस तट्टा मिंग इन नॉक व्हाट इस तट्टा मार रेज रेज सो यू कैन आस्क फ्रॉम द पेशेंट राइट बाबा हैरी लकी हुआ था नेह की हुआ था राइट अम्मा बिन से बाबा हैरी लकी हुआ सो दिस नॉट अ ब्रेज चॉइस राइट हरे ये දැන් දින පහු වෙලා නිසා මොකද ඒක ඔලන් කරනවා කියලා කිය ඩොක්ටර්ස් ලා කිව්වද ඔයාලට මොනවද කරන්නේ කියලා ඉස්සරහට ආ තාම කිව්වේ නැද්ද නැත්තම් තාම කිව්වේ නැහැ ආ බයෝලජි ක්ලාස් කර කර ඉන්නකෝ ඒක ඇවිල්ලා කියන්නක් වෙයි එහෙමද රයිට් රයිට් දැන් ඉස් යෝ ඔබ්ස්ට්‍රැටික් හිස්ටරි දැන් රූටින් තින්ග්ස් ලයික් පාස් මෙඩිකල් පාස් ඔෆ් හරි මට කියන්න අම්මා කලින් ඔයාලට දිය වැඩි ආව ප්‍රෙෂර් හාර්ට් ප්‍රොබ්ලම්ස් මොනවද තිබිලා තියෙනවද එහෙම නැහැ ඔපරේෂන් මොනවද බඩේ කරලා තියෙනවද නැහැ नहीं नहीं दहारे बेहद तो लेटर कैम बाबर टेम खराब पंदा ना गति एलर्जिक पे ना गति तीन वादे नहीं हस्पेन एलर्जिक पे ना वादे डोंट आस्क दैट राइट नाउ कम टू द सोशल हिस्ट्री मट क्या नाम महत्या वाह टीचर के नहीं कोई नहीं दर महत्या जॉब पे आ करना वादे ओ मकान द कराने आह टीचर के नहीं यस टीचर के नहीं खारे सामाने मां नाम तो सही नहीं है मतलब मैं क्यों राइट इसे निर्चारित है मास इस सामान्य आधार में क्या करेंगे हम बना दे हैटर दाहक हैटर दाहक करेंगे ओए वाह सामान्य जीवन तेने का ऐसी दोगलांगे टाइम लेकर नेता माध्यम दलामाई देने को तेना बीएमआर तेरी नहीं दे 
अरे ये मगे वो प्रश्न कर कर लगा नहीं होना पेशेंट नहीं क्यों तभी एक यू हैव टू शो दैट इट्स अ फाइनेंशियल प्रॉब्लम पेशेंट हैविंग फाइनेंशियल प्रॉब्लम क्योंकि एट द एंड यू हैव टू डिस्कस अबाउट द प्रॉब्लम्स पेशेंट्स प्रॉब्लम्स सो दिस इज़ वन ऑफ़ द नॉन मेडिकल प्रॉब्लम फाइनेंशियल इश्यूज पेशेंट के खाटिंग एक घोमारे गानों ने प्रॉब्लम्स दी ना किधर दाहिन को मत जीवन दे इसे दे प्राइड देन दारुओ देंग वो या देंग देंग दवास गाना देंग हॉस्पिटल के नातरा वेला तीन ने भी समाज हाउस देंग बाबा ने बला गाने के इधर एक प्रश्न एक नहीं इधर ओह दोसा प्रॉब्लम्स राइट यू हैड यू हैड दोस प्रॉब्लम्स यू हैड टॉक इ मिसेस Ani Dilki Anisha. She is 27 years old, mother of two children in her third pregnancy. She is from Piliandar area, that is about 15 kilometers away from the hospital. She is a teacher, and her blood group is A positive. Right, that is the introduction. She admitted at 41 weeks for the confinement. Confinement, right? So, as I mentioned you earlier, sir, she is a mother of. Two children in her third pregnancy. Her first two pregnancies were uncomplicated pregnancies, and she had normal vaginal deliveries. And birth date of the babies were three point six and three point one kgs respectively. However, in this pregnancy, it was not a planned pregnancy. Patient was not expecting a baby, and they were not. She was not on preconceptional folic acid. However, patient can remember she was immunized against rubella prior to pregnancy. Okay, prior to pregnancy she had regular menstrual cycles, and her first day of last menstrual period was uh, April seven. And according to that, uh, expected day of delivery would be fourteenth January, twenty twenty two. So she is now forty one weeks. Let us say is now forty one weeks. Okay. And her dates were confirmed by a early scan, so dating finished. Come to the first trimester. In her first trimester, it was not complicated complications such as bleeding, fever with rashes were not. <coughs> sorry, <coughs> were not there. Fever with rashes, bleeding were not there, and she has taken folic acid continuously, and she had a booking visit around eight weeks. In the local clinic, where the history examination and basic urine and blood investigations were done, all were said to be normal. She underwent her anomaly scan around twelve weeks, and it was confirmed that it's a single fetus and healthy, healthy single fetus with correct dates. In the second trimester, she was given iron and calcium supplements, and tetanus stock. So, at one booster dose was given. Around twenty weeks, she had underwent anomaly scan. It was said to be normal. Around twenty-eight weeks, she had a glucose, probably glucose tolerance test, and it was also mother was reassured that it was normal. Her third pregnant, third trimester was uncomplicated. Especially, I asked about the pressure, uh, high blood pressure, or growth problems, but they were not there. So uncomplicated. She is now forty-one weeks admitted for the confinement. Now she is having intermittent mild lower abdominal pain, no no bleeding or no other uh, vaginal discharges. She had underwent a scan after the admission and it was confirmed baby is turned into head down position and growth was normal. According to the patient, CTG was taken and it was reassuring. And patient was informed that they are going to uh, induce with. Probably with prostaglandins tomorrow. Tablets, right? Her past medical and past surgical history was uncomplicated. No known allergies. Socially, you don't have to say social history. You can say socially. Um, she's a teacher, and her husband also a teacher. The family income is about seventy thousand. But since she has two kids at home, 
and this income is not sufficient because of the current situation in the country. And she's more worried about the babies who are at home because no one to take care of them. Only husband has to stay at home and look after the baby. So she's been scared about and she's worried about that thing. And since uh, the husband has to look after the kids at home, he's also having problem with his occupation. That's on your history. Okay, Darwani, right? So this is obstetric history. This is the format for obstetric history. Whether you get a diabetic patient, whether you're a hypertension patient, heart disease, anemic, whatever the problem in obstetric, this should be the format. The alteration then and there, I will tell you all and I will practice you all for those uh, with those amendments, right? So this is the obstetric history. It doesn't matter whether you all are coming to my uh, classes uh, in future or whether you're going to some other place, but try to keep this uh, uh, sketch or the shell in your head and try to fill the gaps, okay? Then, when you come to the, the, I'm talking about the obstetric only, about the obstetric history taken today, but there are a lot of things that we need to discuss about the problem, summary, management, and all these things. We will discuss uh, with the proper classes, but this is, I just want to give you all an overall idea how to take obstetric history. I didn't talk about this quickening. What is quickening? Quickening is the first sensation of the baby's movements. But those are not clinically that much important because time consuming, don't waste your time on those unnecessary things. Ask only about necessary things in about 10, 15 minutes. Okay? So Darwo, you take your break now, take 15 minutes off, right? Have your break, have a fun and rejoin.
Okay. Shall we restart the Arvani? Hello, girls and boys. Shall we restart? Hello. You can listen while having your tasting your coffee or your dinner or whatever it is, doesn't matter. Shall we join there because of the time factor? We have a limited time. Everyone, everyone. Come on, come on, come on, girls and boys, don't be lazy. Right, okay. So, uh, emergency why why is kind of a separate kind of a separate exam in your curriculum right so you have theory you have uh, the practical that is the the clinical case discussion and at the end you have the why why exam why why in the sense emergency why why exam okay so okay when it comes to emergency why you are right again they will expect your confidence they will assess whether you are a confident person to handle an emergency when you face with an emergency they don't expect from you all 100 percent uh, i mean a to z management of a patient but till the help comes till the seniors comes till, till the, the more skillful hand comes whether you can make the patient life that's what they are going to assess with your emergencies <clears throat> okay, Darwani. So again, you have to show off your confidence with these things. Right. So initially I thought of doing only emergencies as a free class, but because of the request of the students, I thought of doing this obstetric history take and I thought um, it's going to be helpful. So I will try to cover uh, uh, the emergencies as much as possible today, but because of the time factor, I'm a bit worried. So anyway, we will cover on the next day, uh, another day, uh, emergencies, don't worry, okay? Right, Daru. Uh, few things regarding uh, these, uh, this, 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 the VIVA course that we are going to conduct, first of all, right? So the VIVA will be conducting in this way. First, if I take a topic, I will briefly summarize or recap the theory part of it, Say, for example, if you get uh, the uh, preeclampsia, the theory part in and around, uh, I will explain briefly. And they will, then I will explain with you all how to take a history. And then we will discuss the examination important things. And then we will discuss how to summarize your history. It's very, very important summary. Because in the exam, sometimes the examiner straight away asks you all to present your summary rather than the history. So how to summarize and how to identify the problems, medical, non-medical, don't worry, we will discuss everything. And at the end, the management, presentation. And I will arrange the hospital visit soon. Okay, so you can, I, I will divide you all into groups and I will arrange the hospital visits. And there I will give you all the direct clinical exposure. You will be able to uh, examine patients, you will be able to observe the procedures. Right, and don't worry about the speculum examination and all those are nothing, right? Simple things you will be mastered at the end. Okay, and all the relevant things we will do, and I will uh, demonstrate you all how to do the obstetric examination and gyne examination and all, all these things. And other things that what I want to tell you all is now you have a limited time, you don't have years and years to practice these things, take see all the clinical cases like that, you don't have time. So what you have to do is, you have to imagine that there are a lot of mosquitoes, right? There's a mosquito farm close by, right? So you have to imagine that, Darwo, when you are at home, when you are relaxing, you have to imagine in front of you, there's a patient with twins or a breed or preeclampsic patient. How are you going to get the history from that patient? You imagine and do practice. This is easy if you have a sister or a brother or even a roommate. So one become the patient and you become the, the candidate and you can get the history from that person. 
that's how you need to practice that because within this short period of time it's practically very difficult for you all to see all the obs patients all the gynae patients i mean the cases but you have to assume that this is a patient with a heart disease in pregnancy how i am going to take the history like that always that you have to talk why by exam you can't be silent you have to talk 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 in a confident way confident way you may not be knowing the, the the subject 100% but if you show that you are a confident person you can gain a lot of marks believe myself as a medical student for my uh, the medicine for short cases like respiratory cardiovascular neurology and abdomen you don't believe my all four diagnoses were wrong my case but i presented in a very confident way i did the examinations in very confident way so i got a very good mark and my rank was 20 island 20% so that is because not that i had a enormous knowledge about the subject my all four diagnoses were not correct but the way that i talk the way that i present the way that i perform i got the best marks right so you all also can do the same thing that you can lie confident way think about your politician they are doing the same thing right so we know that they 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 are they are not genuine but when they come in front of you and talk you you might think oh my god this person is talking truth but that is not the truth okay this is what you need to practice for your exam okay right so without spending much time that we'll move on to emergencies and emergencies one of the main emergencies hemorrhage okay so you need to know about the hemorrhages obstetric hemorrhages so obstetric hemorrhages you can categorize okay suppose this is the time of conception this is the time where the sperm enters out of the medullary sperm entered and met with that ovum the life begins conception just one second daru right can you all see me yes good right so this is the time of conception this is the antenatal period this is the delivery this is the after delivery period so from the time of conception this is up to 28 weeks this is after 28 weeks or so the third trimester this is the delivery this is after delivery it is after delivery so if any pregnant lady having bleeding from the genital tract from the time of conception up to 28 weeks it goes as early pregnancy bleed early pregnancy bleed this is early pregnancy bleeding early pregnancy bleeding can be a miscarriage can be an ectopic but commonly it's a miscarriage okay then if someone is having bleeding after 28 weeks up to delivery then you call them as anti partum hemorrhage aph maybe placenta previa maybe placenta interruption maybe vasa previa or non pregnant pregnancy non related causes like polyps cervical cancers and all these things we will discuss okay and if someone is having bleeding after delivery up to 6 weeks postpartum period that is called postpartum hemorrhage post means after partum means delivery hemorrhage means bleeding postpartum hemorrhage so from the day of conception up to about 28 weeks any bleeding is considered as early pregnancy bleeding commonly miscarriage maybe ectopic maybe hmos on the other hand bleeding occurs after 28 weeks up to the time of delivery is called antepartum hemorrhage antepartum hemorrhage it can be placenta previa placenta abruption vasa previa those are the common things previa and abruption if a deliver if a bleeding happens after 28 weeks sorry after delivery up to 6 weeks postpartum period that is called postpartum hemorrhage so 
first of all i'm going to discuss about the postpartum hemorrhage beginning because if you know the postpartum hemorrhage the resuscitation and all these things it's very easy to uh, manage the antepartum hemorrhage and early pregnancy play okay so we will be first discussing the postpartum hemorrhage postpartum hemorrhage so we will be discussing in detail today about postpartum hemorrhage what is the definition of postpartum hemorrhage bleeding more than 500 ml after the delivery more than 500 ml of loss after the delivery is considered to be postpartum hemorrhage but this is highly theoretical you can't exactly measure how much patient has lost after the delivery what you can do is after the delivery you keep uh, keep something here and what table comes down you have to measure and see uh, now it's 250 it's not a ppa 350 not a ppa 475 not a ppa 500 now ppa no that is not the way this is a clinical assessment darwin what do i mean by clinical assessment is if you have some understanding or some experience about the labor and delivery you know after the delivery how much the patient can have bleed how much of bleeding can she has if you think this patient is having bleeding more than the normal amount that 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 decision is enough to say this is postpartum hemorrhage the amount doesn't matter but if you think this patient is having bleeding more than the normal what she is what a person is having after delivery if you have that assumption then you know it's a postpartum hemorrhage but theoretically it is 500 ml of loss pph darwin can be divided into two primary and secondary what do you mean by primary pph if bleeding occurs within the first 24 hours of delivery that is primary pph what is secondary pph bleeding occurs after 24 weeks up to 6 weeks postpartum period why you have divided them into primary and secondary indica why you have divided into primary and secondary because the road the courses are different so that management is going to be different primary pph management is different from secondary pph as an emergency most likely thinking you will get primary pph in your exam as the case and majority of you will get a case of pph because this is one of the common reason of maternal death and this is maybe the commonest reason worldwide for maternal deaths okay so you are supposed to know in and out about pph okay right right we will discuss about primary pph first primary postpartum hemorrhage what are the causes for primary postpartum hemorrhage? If I share this screen with you guys. So, we are going to discuss about pre pH. I'm not going to discuss about the history, but what is the correlation between uh, this Taj Mahal and PPH? This lady died because of a PPH at delivery. So, after that, he built this nice monument okay so that is the the story about it right primary postpartum hemorrhage you can see those days when there was no proper hospital deliveries mothers delivered at home no birth attendance she just delivered baby on a side poor life right this poor woman is having continuous bleeding without treatment definitely she is going to die okay this is the case of primary pph you can see the massive bleeding patient has bled her whole lot of blood and it's wet all the the bed linen and all and it has fallen onto the ground as well so this is a massive pph just at a glass you can say more than 2.5 liters blood loss nearly 3 liters blood loss this one so massive postpartum hemorrhage you know postpartum hemorrhage can be very massive 
within a couple of minutes, the patient can bleed the whole amount of blood. Okay. It's one of the massive, 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 fast hemorrhage that you will see in your life, postpartum hemorrhage. So when it comes to postpartum hemorrhage, Tago, primary postpartum hemorrhage, what are the causes for postpartum hemorrhage? Causes you can divide as atonic, trauma, and other causes. Atonic, trauma, and other causes. <laughs> what is atonic? What is the tone? Sorry. <clears throat> Sorry. What is what is the tone? Now you all know that if you all have work in a labor room, you all know before pregnancy, before delivery, the uterus is so distended and lax. So distended. Okay. Then after delivery, the uterine muscle should contract forcefully and it becomes stony hard after the delivery. So if you palpate the tummy before delivery, the uterus is here up to the sternum. But after delivery, it is at or below the level of umbilicus and it is like woody heart, very like, like, like a coconut shell. Okay, it's very hard in consistency after delivery because it has contracted forcefully. Why it is important, Dargo? Because if you see this picture, you can see the red color. Blood vessels are going through and through or in between the muscle fibers during pregnancy. The uterus having an enormous amount of blood supply through these dilated blood vessels. So after delivery, Darwo, you have to cut off this blood supply to the uterus because the uterus does not need this amount of cardiac output after the delivery. So what happened? These muscle fibers will strongly and forcefully con contract and thereby they will constrict the blood vessels which are going in between the muscle fibers. In other words, after delivery, the uterus must, must contract forcefully in order to stop these uh, dilated blood vessels and stop bleeding. If the uterus is different muscle is not contracting after the delivery, patient can have massive bleeding because these blood vessels are now like open taps. Okay, open taps because they can bleed, bleed, bleed till the end. The whole amount of blood. Okay, so uterine contraction is a must after the delivery. If the uterus is not contracting after the delivery, it will be soft and boggy, and the level will be above the level of umbilicus. Now, well again, yeah, okay, soft and boggy, right? Soft and boggy above the level of umbilicus, and patient can have passive bleeding. This is called uterine aton. 90% of the cases, more than 90% of the cases. Primary PPA is because of atonic. 90% of cases, majority. This is because of atonic. Right. What is the second most common reason? That is the trauma, not the soma. It's the trauma. What is trauma, Daru? Sorry. Trauma means damage or a tear in the gentle trend. If I draw like this, Right, this is the anus. Patient can have massive bleeding from the episiotomy. That's why it's kind of a trauma. That's why we are not putting episiotomies routinely. It can cause PPH. Or patient can have other vaginal ball tears, vulval tears, vaginal ball tears, cervical tears, uterine tears. Any tear, any damage can lead to PPH. Trauma. What are the other causes that we need? Other causes like bleeding disorders. Patient would have been on like you know heparin, aspirin, maybe dengue. All these conditions can lead to coagulation defects, and as a result, patient can have bleeding. Other causes. In this picture, you can see you can compare on your left hand side when the uterus is not contracted, the amount of blood supply to the uterus. But when it is contracted, hardly any blood supply to the muscle and thereby you can stop bleeding. Okay. Right. Are you guys with me? Right. So if a patient is, I mean, okay, we will take a scenario like this. Okay. 
right okay now we are going to discuss a real scenario right about a pph patient and how are you going to manage this patient okay so now you know what is pph what is the definition of pph what is primary pph what is secondary pph secondary pph means bleeding occurs after uh, 24 hours up to six weeks postpartum period what is the commonest reason for secondary pph promoting what is the commonest reason for secondary PPH? Infections. Endometritis, endometrial infections is the commonest reason. That is not usually a real, 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 real emergency, but it's also an emergency. Okay. Main emergency is primary PPH. Okay, Priyanjan. You today you don't feel like sleep, isn't it? Last few classes, I could remember. <laughs> Whatever I tell, right, we are going to sleep. Today, you are very good. Right. So, we know when it comes to primary PPH, that is, what are the causes? It's eight on is the commonest reason, trauma, and other causes. Right. So, the wiper will be conducted in this way. They will give a scenario to you all. Okay. Okay, look. Right. We will say Ravi Kamal, Ravi Lakmal. Ravi Lakmal. Now, I'm the examiner. Okay. The examiner will tell you in the exam, Ravi Lakmal, okay, you are the intern house officer in my ward, right? Now you have finished your, of your work, you are the labor ward on-call person, and you go to your room to have a nap, okay? Have a sleep, right? You can't have a sleep, you can have a nap, right? Now you are in the labor, you are in the quarters, right? There was a patient in the labor room, delivered, and the nurses will give you a call. See, a pretty cute nurse will give you a call at the middle of the night. You are sleeping, right? The nurse will call you, Doctor, I had a patient in your bleed, you know, doctor. That's how they usually give the information, right? Nelevi, Nelevi, right? So they will say, that patient did it, but there's some bleeding, doctor, right? The moment when they say that there's bleeding, you have to immediately come to your mind, this is going to be a PPH. Because she thought that, She's bleeding more than the normal amount. So you have to assume that this is going to be a PPH. A compartment in the What you will do next? Now you are still on the call, right? On call room. You are still in the on call room. You are answering this call. What are the other information you are going to gain with this nurse? But officially, what are the things that you are going to gain from this nurse now? You have to ask from the nurse, okay, she's just telling, what did you bleed de novo again? So how much bleed did she had? How many pads you have removed? What is the pulse rate? What is the blood pressure? All those things you have to ask from the patient. She will tell you, doctor, um, uh, pressure is okay, right? What do they mean by the pressure? Usually they mean by the systolic pressure, okay? The systolic pressure will not drop initially, Daru. What happened? You know the systolic pressure and diastolic pressure? Okay, right? Initially, when there is bleeding, systolic blood pressure will be maintained at a stable level, fairly stable level, around 100. But the diastolic pressure can slightly go up initially. So what will happen to the gap between systole and diastole? Reduce. What is this gap called? Pulse pressure. So the pulse pressure can be, uh, can be low. That means patient is in an impending shock state. Okay, so in a patient who is having bleed in the room, always you have to check not only systole, not only diastole, you have to check both. Aruna Chaminda, right? So you have to check that, uh, the systole and diastole both together and see what is the pulse pressure. If the pulse pressure is narrowing, that you know, patient is compensating now. Next step is decompensation. So, okay, now you are still in the quarters. You are getting this, you are getting this call. There's this telling patient is having more bleeding. When you ask from the patient, you have to ask from the patient what is the pulse, what is the blood pressure, right? All those information you have to get. Right. Now you have to get ready, you have to get out from the bed, right? Now you are about to run to the labor room. Now you all know that oh, PPA is one of the main, one of the major obstetric emergencies. Can you all manage a PPH alone? The nurse will say, Dr. Pulse rate 100, 120, blood pressure is 90 by 60. Then you know 
she is having heavy bleeding. So now you are ready to come to the labor room. You are about 100 meters away from the labor room. Right? Labor room, making mistake, room, make a lagamat and then the apple didn't get it. So you are there about 100 meters away. You are about to run to the labor room. <laughs> what will you do? While you reaching, before you reach into the place, what you can do? You can same time ask the nurses to put two white bow cannuli. Two white bow cannuli. Right? Ask the nurses to put two white bow cannuli and take blood for cross matching. Because a bleeding patient must need blood transfusion. So before the blood transfusion, you have to cross match blood. For this cross matching, it takes some time. So till you, while you reach in the place, you ask the nurses to put cannulas and establish IV lines and withdraw sample, withdraw a sample of blood for the cross matching. How much blood you will cross match initially, Aisha? Aisha Pereira. At least you need to have initially three pints of blood ready. Okay, you ask the nurses to withdraw blood for three blood and same for cross matching at least ask three points. And still you are on the call, you ask the nurses to start fluids, saline from either end of these IV lines. Ask the nurses to start fluids from either end of the, of the, uh, the IV lines. Okay, normal saline. Not just drop by drop, you ask them to squeeze and send them fast. Squeeze the bottle, okay? Squeeze it and send them fast. Fluids. Till you arrive at the same. And ask them to, now you all know that one, when there's an emergency, you have to always go by airway, breathing and circulation. Normally, if the patient is talking with you all, conscious, you don't have to worry about the airway. But the patient having bleeding, patient may be listening. Amari, ah, doctor, do something, doctor, like that, right? So ask them to give oxygen, wire a face mask. Okay, then the circulation is the main thing. So you ask the nurses to put two white book anyway on either side and pump fluid, take blood for cross matching and pump fluid till you arrive the scene. Now you are coming, you are running from there to here, to the labor room. What else you can do, Mohammed Amri? So while you are reaching the place, Daru, you know, this is going to be a hemorrhage. This is going to be an emergency. So you can't manage alone. You have to call for help. Call for help. To whom are you going to call first? Boys, for the God's sake, please call your girlfriend first. Tell her that mama emergency something like that. Stop her first. Who else you need to inform? You inform your seniors, Daru. Who are the seniors? You are the house officer. You can inform your senior house officer, registrar, senior registrar, even the consultant. If there's a real emergency, you can inform them. Right? But you have you, you have to inform all your seniors. Who else you are going to inform? Inform the theater staff. And the anesthetist, very important. Make them aware that there's emergency going on. At one point, we might have to come to the theater. Theater cleaners, the toilet, who girl in the in the past to the So inform that them we are coming, there's emergency going on. Okay. And inform the uh, the, the, the anesthetic as well. And who else you need to inform? Inform the blood bank. Blood bank, Aki also by this time may be sleeping. So give her a call, Aki. There's a patient with TPH. We will need blood. Please do the cross packing soon as possible. So inform these people while you are reaching the place. If you are already in the place, also ask one of the people to inform all these parties and make them aware this emergency going on. In other countries, that they have emergency buzzer, right? So when there's a PPH going on, they put the emergency buzzer, and everybody who is responsible will be alert immediately. But in Sri Lanka, Sri Lanka, since we are a developing, ever developing country, we don't have those facilities still. Okay, but you have to inform them. So you got a call from the labor room that there's a patient having possible PPH. You ask from the nurses, what is the pulse rate? What is the blood pressure? Pulse rate is high, blood pressure is low. Then what you asked, 
to ask the nurses to give oxygen, put two white box annually, withdraw blood for cross matching. Okay, right, and pump fluid. While you are reaching the place, inform your seniors, call for help. Inform your seniors and inform the blood bank, theater, and the anesthetist. Now you have come to the place. What you will do? When you come to the place, immediately you need to have a visual assessment of the blood cross. Can you remember the, that picture that I have shown you? Have a clinical assessment. Whether this is a minor PPH or whether it's a PPH like that, patient is pouring blood everywhere. That means it's a massive hemorrhage. So you need to have visual assessment of the patient, of the blood loss, and the role. And afterwards, what you have to do, you have to again go systematically airway breathing circulation. A, B, C. Okay, airway breathing and circulation. Now we bring in circulation. Normally, if the patient is awake, conscious, don't worry about the army, the army will be okay. Then the breathing, make sure that the patient is getting oxygen. Third thing, circulation is the main thing. Make sure that patient is having two white book annuals on either side and you have sent blood for cross matching and the fluid is running and running and running. So to squeeze and send them fast, Squeeze the bottle. Squeeze the bottles and send them fast, not just drop by drop. How long normally it will take for the blood to be ready? At least 10, 15 minutes. Okay. So till then, you can give fluids fast. Crystallite like normal saline or heart muscle, whatever it is, right? Normal saline or heart muscle. Will you give dextrose? Bleeding patients, will you give dextrose sign up? Will you give dextrose daru? Gayatri, Nusrat, Pavilora, Jan, sorry. Will you give dextrose? Mevanti Pereira, will you give dextrose? Yes or no? Yes or no? And why not? No, you don't give dextrose, why not? What does dextrose contain? It's glucose and water. If you give dextrose, the red cells will utilize glucose. Then what we're having? Only water. Can you retain water without electrolytes? No. This water will be escaped. To where they escape? They can escape into the lungs, pulmonary edema. They can escape into the brain, cerebral edema. So never give dextrose for a hypovolemic, hypotensive patient. You can kill the patient fast. If you want to kill her, yes. Otherwise, don't do it. Okay, that one, right? So best thing is saline, you normal saline. Pump and you normal saline. Okay, right. So when you reach to this place, to the labor room or when you are in the labor room, the room if there's an emergency going on most of the cases you are the only senior person available at that moment because the registrars and SRs and consultants will not be waiting in the labor room for 24 hours no that is the house officer will be staying so you are the boss at that time you have to get that leadership so you have to order you have to order your staff like you do this thing, you do that thing. But last time Mr. Tiger in the Catherine, like that to inform, you arrange your staff. You become the leader and you give orders. You don't leave the patient, you are with the patient. You tell, okay, let me so our blood equipment again. Like that, you inform the others and you give orders to the other till the, the, the next leadership comes, you will be the leader. That is very important. Call karana kila blood bank after the call karana kila patient metana dala kila call lagi eli line no other. No, you order someone to appoint someone. Okay, you go and call the blood bank that we need blood urgently. Something like that. Okay, so you will be the leader, right? Right. So ARV breathe in circulation. Now fluid is running, and when the blood is available, you can quickly um, check and you can start the blood transfusion. 
Now the fate is going, that is going, and patient is now resuscitating. We are resuscitating the patient. Now the blood pressure is quickly, and it's not so quickly, slowly blood pressure is picking up, patient getting better and better. Then what, what will you do next? While the resuscitation is going on, you don't stop the resuscitation, you palpate the uterus. When you palpate the uterus, Daru, if the fundus is above the level of umbilicus, soft and boggy, what is your diagnosis? What is your diagnosis? Aton. Uterus has not contracted, isn't it? Then you have to go according to atonic management. On the other hand, when you examine the patient, if the uterus is below the level of umbilicus and hard, that means what? This is not a tonic, it looks like some trauma. Suppose now the resuscitation is going on, still no one came, they are far away. You are the only person here, only uh, the, the senior person here, you are the leader. Now resuscitation is going on, you palpate the tummy, you proceed soft and boggy and above the level of umbilicus. What will you do now? This is Atoni. What will you do now? Pravil Akmal, Dilki Anisha, what will you do now? You have to, one way, you have to start drugs to make the uterus contract. What are the drugs that are? Sintocinol. You can start the Sintocinol. Right? So you start, you are the nurses to start Sintocinol. Sintocinol, what is the dose? You have to know the doses when you come to the emergencies. Okay, Sintocinol, what is the dose that are? Five units bolus, five units bolus, followed by 10 units per hour infusion. Five units bolus, or you take five units and you IV, five units, and start infusion, 10 units per hour infusion. Okay. What is the next thing that you can do? How synthesis is running? Meantime, you can start ergometrin as well. Ergometrin. Before you give ergometrin, you have to make sure that there are no contraindications for ergometrin. What are the contraindications for ergometrin? What are the two contraindications? Hypertension and heart disease. If the patient is not a non-hypertensive, not a non-heart disease patient, you can do ergometrin. 0.5 milligram. You can give 0.5 milligram IEM. Or 0.25 milligram IV. You work the metric. Okay, right. And what else? Sintocinon, ergometry, what else? Misoprostol, misoprostol. Misoprostol. Five tabs, about five tabs. One tablet is 200 micrograms. So five tablets is one milligram. Which route you use? Patient is in lethal tummy pressure, having bleeding like an open tap. If you put into the vagina, what will happen? If you put misoprostol into the vagina and wait and see like this, what will happen? With the blood flow, all the misoprostol will be pasted on your face, like a nice facial, right? So don't put it to the vagina, you put it to the rectum. Rectal misoprostol fight tablets. And there's another drug that is, anyone knows? Tranexamic acid, IED, tranexamic acid. To stabilize the cord, you can start the tranexamic acid also. So that one, in A tony, you don't give one drug and wait the response and see and give the second drug? No. You give all these drugs together as a package. You start synthesizing you give ergometry, you put mysoprostol, and you start tranexamic acid. Everything together. Will you do that by yourself? Will you prepare the cytosinone repair No. You ask the nurses to do that. Okay, you command them. Okay, you prepare cytosinone, you prepare like that, you do that. Carboprost also, you can use. Somebody asked about carboprost. But carboprost is not commonly available. So don't be used mifepristone. No, that way. Mifepristone you use for the abortion purpose. To create an abortion, you use mifepristone. 
that is the mesoprostol that we use in this case. So there's a PPH going on. Patient is unstable. You are resuscitating the patient. Fluid is going, blood is going. And meantime, you ask the nurses to start these drugs. What will you do? What will you do? You can do the massage. You can massage the uterus. When you do the massage, mechanical massaging, that stimulates the uterus muscle to contract. You do proper massaging. How many hands you use? So single hand or both hands? You use both hands to squeeze the uterus, squeeze it and keep it for some time and release it. Massaging does not mean that like Thai massage, you apply tail behind and you know, like that, not that way. You massage it well, like a real massage. You squeeze it with your both hands, the uterus, right? Squeeze it and keep it for some time and release it and do it repeatedly. When you do that repeatedly, the uterus will stimulate it to contract. Right? Uterus will stimulate to contract. Now suppose, still your seniors haven't come, consultant is doing classes, no one available, you are the on-call person, you are the responsible person now, no, no other help, you are doing uterine massaging, however, not helpful. What is your next step? Next step is by manual compression. In this picture, you can see one hand on the tummy, abdominally, other hand, fisted hand, my God, fisted hand into the vagina, into the anterior fornix, and in between your two hands, you have to squeeze the uterus. People are wondering, can you insert a fisted hand into the vagina? Oh my God. Yes, at the time of delivery, by China is so spacious, you can park even a BMW inside that spacious inside the vagina. So put one hand into the vagina, other hand on the abdomen, in between your two hands, squeeze the uterus. Squeeze the uterus. Okay, this is called bimanual compression. This is very helpful especially till the help comes, Daro, you can stop, you can control the bleeding to a greater extent by, by manual compression. So what are the things we have done so far? Resuscitation is going on. You have started drugs to contract the uterus. You are doing different massaging, not helpful. Now you are doing by manual compression. Suppose still patient is having bleeding. Still patient is having bleeding. What will you do next? What will you do next? If the bleeding continues, the next step is Darwani, you have to go for what is called tension temperature or the condom catheter insertion. Or as this is called tamponade effect. Right? The ideal setup, in ideal setup, you can use this Bakri catheter. Bakri catheter. But in our local settings, rather Bakri catheter this is expensive, you can use the condom catheter. That's why, boys, every one of you need to have at least one condom in your pocket. At least one condom in your pocket. This is life saving. If your girlfriend asks, you can justify all this because this is life saving. Condoms are life savings in this way. Right? You take a condom and you take a folic catheter you insert the folic catheter into the condom okay and you have to tie the end and you have to insert this condom catheter into the uterine cavity and connect into a saline drip this way you connect into a saline drip and you insert this gadget into the uterine cavity and send saline under tension under pressure and saline will go and go and go and go and it will fill the cavity and compress the bleeders. So you will get the bleeders from the inside of the uterine cavity. So when you inflate this bulb, they will compress the bleeders and stop bleeding. This is extremely helpful, very simple procedure that you can do. After putting the condom catheter, you have to pack the vagina with ghost towels, otherwise this thing will come out. 
So to prevent that, you have to pack the vagina with cold towels. Okay, Ashari, right? So this is called condom tamponade effect. Okay, tamponade effect. So you try drugs, you try massaging, by manual compression, fading all. Next step is uh, next step is condom catheter insertion. After inserting the condom catheter, that work, how will you monitor this patient? Kin kini. How will you monitor this patient? After inserting the condom catheter. After inserting the condom catheter. Can't hear an all person now. Right. So this is the umbilicus, right? So after inserting the condom catheter, you have to mark the level of the fundus with the marker pen. Okay. And frequently you have to monitor the level of fundus. If the fundus remaining this level, or fundus coming down, 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 that means your condom catheter is working. On the other hand, after inserting the condom, you check the patient after half an hour, this is rising, rising, and rising. What does that mean? What does that mean? There is still bleeding inside the cavity. That's why the fundus is rising. So this condom catheter is now not helpful. Fails. Is that clear, Madhavi? Right? So after inserting the condom catheter, that you have to monitor the patient's vital signs as well as very importantly, you have to monitor the level of the fundus. If the level of the fundus remaining and that level will coming down, that means it's working. So how long you will normally keep this condom catheter? Usually 24 hours. Maximally 24 hours you keep. Why don't you keep it longer? Charita, why, why don't you keep this condom catheter for a longer time? So infection is. Yes, one is infection. Other thing? Anisha, why do you why don't you keep it more than 24 hours? Kinkini, why don't you keep it more than 24 hours? One is infection. Other thing is pressure necrosis daru. If you leave it for a long time, because of the pressure given by this uh, uh, the bulb to the uterine muscle, muscle can undergo necrosis. So after 24 hours, you have to take it out. Now suppose Darwani, 24 hours gone, patient's vitals are stable. Okay, patient pulse rate is improved, blood pressure is improved, no obvious bleeding coming from coming down, fundal, fundal level is stable. So 24 hours gone. Now your boss and boss come and tell you, okay, so Jeevan, yesterday you have put this condom catheter, not take it out. How will you take it out? Will you go and straight away? Suppose you have inflated this bulb with say 400 ml of saline. Okay, you have inflated with 400 ml of saline. How will you take it out? Will you withdraw all 400 ml at once? No, that way. You withdraw only half of that. If you have inflated with 400 ml, you withdraw only 200 ml. Okay? You take 200 ml out and wait for about an hour and see whether the bleeding recurs. If there is no bleeding after about one hour, when you are sure there is no bleeding, you remove the remaining 200 ml and you remove the all gadget out. So please remember, when you're going to take the, the, the poly catheter or the quantum catheter out, you don't take it out at once. You have to do it gradually. You have to deflate it halfway, then take it out. These are the practical points that they are going to ask from you all in the exam. Remember. Right? And what is the difference between poly catheter and buckle catheter? Bakri catheter and the poly catheter. Poly catheter, but almost same function they provide, but there's a slight difference in poly catheter and bakri catheter. 
in polycatheters that go if there is bleeding inside this blood this blood cannot come out so that's why the level of fundus is rising there is no way this blood to escape but in bacteria catheter they have a separate channel if this bleeding inside this blood can come out through this channel that is the advantage of bacteria catheter over condom catheter a simple thing okay but this is costly uh, whereas whereas uh, condom catheter is not costly condom ya kiya kithara no me dawasala ekra tax ya gahala danne ek ek gana walta thiyena samanya it's about 10 yes, minutes yes daru uh, so in bacteria catheter there is no point of monitoring fundus because the blood can come out right in foli catheter i didn't get in you for in foli catheter after putting uh, after inflating they will monitor the fundus after half an hour yes, yes. but in bacteria catheter because blood will come out through a separate channel no point of monitoring fundus no, i mean not necessary not necessary you don't i mean if you put a foli catheter condom catheter you have to be really careful about the fundus and you have to frequently monitor it but in case if you have put a bacteria catheter because the blood is coming out you don't have to but no harm doing it because you know sometimes this channels can be blocked apata gena bakri kathi ida avurudu ganakata avurudu lakshya kata kalin hada pawenna pulwa right engalan thing ayin kara pawenna pulwa mehe hedagena so and so in foli kathi if the fundus remain in the same level that means the bleeding has stopped or bleeding is in the same level it doesn't matter right even though patient had bleeding and bleed no more bleeding that means a stable patient bleeding stopped that's okay fundus will remain fundus in the same bleeding. level Uh -huh. Fundus will remain in the same level if bleeding stops also. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, thank Fundus you. Fundus will be rising if there is continuous collection. If there is no continuous collection, means it doesn't matter. Then it's okay. That means patient is stable. No ongoing bleeding. No continuous bleeding. That means bleeding stopped. Okay. Right. So resuscitation going on. Then, then, then you have started the drugs that one. Then you have done the your friend massaging, not helpful. By manual compression, not helpful. You have put a condom catheter. Seems like it's also not working. Patient's condition deteriorating. So what's your next step? By this time, definitely someone senior, someone experienced should attend this case. Okay. so they should come so if this is not working that our next step is immediately you have to rush to the uh, theater with the patient you can't manage this patient further in your labor room at your level so take the patient to the theater that's why we have informed the theater staff in advance otherwise they will say doctor ki with any pph ka the no ki aapko ko mat danne like that nurse so right hurry we will learn right so you have to inform them in advance Right now, you have reached the theater. You have gained, uh, gone to the theater with the patient. Right in the theater, what you can do in the theater, Darwo. Let me share this one. Yes, in the theater. Next step is you have to do a laparotomy, and you have to put a B-linked stitch. Okay, this is how the B-linked. is put you can say even modified bleeding whatever it is bleeding right so after putting the bleeding you can see the picture on the, on down right hand side right how does the uterus looks like is like a pumpkin okay so it artificially contract the uterus this is called bleeding stitch so putting a bleeding is also very effective in order to achieve good contraction So first step is you do bleeding stitch. Even after bleeding, there are sometimes uterus may not be contracting. So what is the next step? Next step is you have to do systematic devascularization. Mukhtar da pay ki hui. Systematic, systematically you have to reduce the blood supply to the uterus. Okay, from where the uterus get the blood supply? From the uterine artery. from where the uterine artery start from the internal iliac artery from where the internal iliac artery start from the common iliac and the aorta 
okay so on the from the aorta you get the common iliac immediately divided into internal and external iliac internal iliac will give a gives of this uterine artery so what will you do first if the bleach fails next step is you go and ligate both side uterine arteries uterine artery ligation if that is fails that means if the patient is having continuous bleeding even after that you go and ligate bilateral internal iliac arteries make sure you are ligating only the internal iliac if you ligate the external iliac what will happen again your face will be on the facebook youtube sirsa tv news first everywhere because if you like it the external iliac the limb will be scheming and you will have to amputate the limb okay so you have to identify the internal iliac artery and ligate it suppose after internal iliac ligation or some patient can have bleeding on the bump work how does the patient get bleeding after internal iliac ligation both sides how if you see this picture dargo the ovarian artery ovarian artery also anastomosis with the uterine artery so even though you like it this side the ovarian artery might be less but if you like it ovarian artery ovary is going to necros so patient will be uh, going into menopausal state so you don't like it the uh, the ovarian artery but you have to like it both side internal iliac suppose after internal iliac also ligation also patient having continuous bleeding what is the next step what is the next step internal iliac artery start from the aorta you go and ligate the aorta can you all no no more ligation after internal iliac so what is the next next step or the last step hysterectomy go for hysterectomy usually in these cases you do subtotal hysterectomy to leave the cervix but you take the uterine body subtotal hysterectomy subtotal hysterectomy okay this is the management for your trinatal what is the management this is the management what is that you anyway you go by yeah we breathe in circulation resuscitate the patient start drugs you try and massaging by manual compression condom catheter insertion laparotomy and bleach systematic devascularization that is you try not re internal iliac artery ligation failing all you go for hysterectomy you go for hysterectomy okay this is if you want to really preserve the fertility suppose a uh, a uh, uh, medical student after the age of 35 completed her degree and she is pregnant elderly primary delivered went into pph so you can't straight away go and remove the uterus no so you have to anyhow try to preserve the uterus so you do this bleach systematic devascularization and if fails only you consider hysterectomy on the other hand janavati coming from uh, uh, galimbidunu ever right this is the seventh pregnancy unwanted manusya tire gihilla kavurut ne bala ganna right but she is pregnant coming with the seventh pregnancy unwanted pregnancy she is going into pph a tony what will you do you do the resuscitation you try and massaging drugs by manual compression condom catheter if everything fails usually you do a laparotomy and go for hysterectomy okay you can even try bleeding but if the bleeding also fails next step is you don't waste your time by ligating these vessels and taking the risk you straight away go for a hysterectomy a tony management okay fine in pph management darone there is a concept called golden hour have you all heard of golden hour what is golden hour golden hour means from the time you diagnose pph from the onset by within one hour at the end of one hour you have to come to a decision what you are going to do for this patient that means 
If the bleeding continues, definitely you have to consider one of the surgical options, usually hysterectomy. Because this initial one hour is very important. If you miss the one hour, first one hour, there's a chance that the patient can go into decompensated shock, DIC, all these complications. So within the one first hour, you have to do the resuscitation, drugs, everything possible. If fails, you have to come to a decision, okay, I'm going to do the hysterectomy. That is what is called golden hour of PD. Golden hour of PTH. Okay, so this is how you manage uterine atonic leading to PTH. Right. Suppose again, there's a bleeding patient, postpartum hemorrhage. But when you examine the uterus, uterus is well contracted below the level of umbilicus. What is the next possibility? Next possibility is patient may be having a trauma. So you have to examine the patient systematically. Put the patient into literal question under good vision, you have to examine this patient. Examine the vulva first, any vulval tears. Examine the episode or whether the bleeding coming from the episode. If there is no obvious bleeding from outside, you look at the vaginal balls. What is the speculum you use? Sims or Castros? Sims is like this. Castros is like this. Which one you use? Remember, in obstetrics, you usually use the Sims speculum. You put the same speculum, have a look systematically where are the lesion. Okay. And then you have to see the cervix, whether any cervical tear is there or not. What is the instrument that you use to catch the cervix? Charitra. What is the instrument that you use to catch the cervix? Pregnant cervix. Green arm pages. You use the green arm cages to catch the cervix and examine the cervix right around any cervical tear. Okay, is that clear, Darwani? Right? So examine the cervix for a tear. Okay, right. So, likewise, systematically, you have to examine the patient. If there is a tear anywhere, what will you do? You suture. Under direct vision, you suture. Should we use, how should we use, how to use those forceps? I mean, seems for seems uh, speculum that you just put, there are two handles on either side. You put one handle into that and pull it down, then you can see inside. Same way, you put another one here and pull it up, then you can see the, the, the upper wall. Like guys, you put here and pull this way, put one there and pull that way, then you can visualize the entire vaginal cavity. Three arm cages, this is the cervix, this is the margin of the cervix. So if the green arm cage is not crushing, you can catch the cervix like this and have a proper look here and there. It doesn't traumatize the cervix because pregnant cervix is very fragile. Okay, so if there's a tear anywhere, you have to suture it with absorbable sutures, white cream or something, absorbable. Absor we use absorbable sutures. Exception is cervical tears. Cervical tears, that was, normally you don't suture. Why? Cervix is so fragile. When you try to prick the cervix, it causes more bleeding and more tearing. So instead of tearing, uh, suturing, what you do for cervical tears is you put a pack, vaginal pack, and you a compression, and thereby you can stop bleeding. So cervical tears normally you manage with packing, vaginal packing. Other tears you have to put stitches. Vilangeda, Zamira, Vilangeda, right. 
This is the management of primary PPH. What is the management of secondary PPH? Secondary PPH is because of ble uh, infection. Patient will not having like, you know, gush of bleeding, like a tap, open tap, but patient will have continuous bleeding, drop by drop, drop by drop, drop by drop, going over for six weeks. Management is, again, you have to go airway breathing and circulation. Usually those patients are stable. Main thing is you take all the cultures and start antibiotics. Broad spectrum antibiotics which will cover gram positive, gram negative, and anaerobes. Something like coamoxiclave, or you can start kefroxim and metronidazole, gentamicin, those are the drugs that we use. Okay, the learning. This is how you manage PPH. So with regard to PPH, what are the things that you should know? You should know the definition of PPH. What is PPH? Then you should know what is primary, what is secondary, what are their differences? When you come to the primary PPH, there are three causes, atony, chroma, and other causes. Pominus is atony. So whatever the cause, if a patient is having heavy bleeding, you have to go according to airway, breathing, circulation. Normally, the patient is conscious, airway is okay. But the breathing, to facilitate the breathing, better give oxygen. Circulation is the main thing that you're going to worry. You have to put two white book annually and establish two. Why two IV lines you need? Hey, why you want always in emergency people talk about two white book animals? Why two white book animals? Because this is an emergency where the circulation is going to collapse. If a patient is going into shock status, undecompensated shock status, all the peripheral vessels will be shut down, no blood supply. Then Darrow, you can't establish any IV lines. So that's why before a patient collapse, so before the peripheral circulation is collapsed, you have to establish enough IV access. Because once the patient collapses, then you can't, there is no way that you can give fluid. If one IV line is blocked, then you are not having anything, patient is going to die, definitely. I have seen one case where the patient is going, patient died, patient died because of the inability to uh, establish IV line. When I was working in uh, Kantale, before my foreign training, there was a patient came, delivered at home, you know, Kantale is a, is a, there are some areas where there are no buses, no facilities and all, patient delivered home delivery, went into PPH, Massive PPH, it took one and a half hours for them to reach the hospital. By the time patient reached, patient was almost in a, I mean, decompensated shock. So we tried, the, the anesthetists, they are the people expert. So they tried their best to establish IV line, but failed. So without fluid, patient died. By the time when you do the venous cut down and establish IV line, it was too late. So it's very important, all bleeding patients, all emergencies, you have two lines with you. So even though one goes, you have another extra with your hand. extra Spare You need to have a spare wheel, right? For dual sim Other things also in life, sometimes, not always, sometimes better to have a spare one. So I mean, like, you know, uh, the spare wheel and those things, right? Not other things. Okay, try that one. So today we have discussed obstetric history taking, right? So obstetric history taking, please remember about that sketch that one, right? I have already told you, so please go through that note again. And if you all have any doubt, please call me or please contact me, I'll clarify those, right? And remember, when you go to another class or when you go to another examiner, 
in that exam even another teacher or somebody they might do some additional points right but those points are usually useless in the sense when it comes to the exam because you have to stick on to the most important positive and negative signs because you are your fight is always with the time within that even short time period you have to ask about the most important things otherwise if you keep asking about all these unnecessary things keep on asking at the end you are losing time because the after 10 15 minutes the examiner will say okay time is finished you come and present the case okay so i will guarantee 100% if you can ask those questions that i have discussed with you that is much more than enough for you to get a distinction okay believe me right but be confident keep practicing those things right and when you all come to the hospitals and the, the remaining classes also i will keep doing keep repeating these things then at the end i hope you will be confident and emergency is that when i discuss the most important and most long emergency that is the postpartum hemorrhage okay so everything about postpartum hemorrhage i think i covered right so please go through this handout if you all have any doubt please uh, let me know right so i'm going to start my the proper the viva classes from 20 i think 29th onwards not this saturday the following saturday onwards right so those who are interested you can join and i'll make sure i will cover everything and hospital visits your speculum and examinations everything i will cover and um, so everything will be covered so and i'll be doing only 10 paid classes right because some people i know that i'm not going to criticize others but i have seen some people are doing separate classes for breach separated classes for like that you can drag the syllabus but that is not necessary right in 10 classes i'll make sure that i will cover your syllabus okay 10 paid classes so thank you so much for joining today and keep in touch if you all have any doubt whether you come to my classes or not it doesn't matter let me know i'll help you out okay thank you again and enjoy your day